Welcome to Laval for the European qualifier of the IFSC. Tonight we get to find out who will take our second Olympic ticket of the day because of course we've already had the women's side of this competition which we'll chat about in a sec. My name is Matt Groom, I'm joined by Shauna Coxie in the commentary box and Shauna this feels like Groundhog Day, we're doing it all over again. I can't believe we, we're going to go through that whole episode again because wow what a show we had earlier but this is really shaping up to be I mean, a momentous day for climbing. Exactly and look we are going to talk about spoilers of course we've just had the women's competition and we'll chat about that more in a minute but what an atmosphere this stadium was left in. Everyone filed out they were reset and now as you can see we have a procession of the athletes through the middle holding the flags but while that goes on, we're just going to watch some of the observation. Four boulders out there, and we start with the boulder round. 100 points available for the boulder, 25 points per boulder. That score is then added to the lead score of 100 points to get to a total of 200. Whoever gets the most points will win the competition. Whoever wins the competition will win an Olympic ticket and could potentially be a future gold medalist. And when I say it like that, it's <laughs> unreal. Like, someone here could win the Olympics. I feel like you're getting a little bit ahead of yourself there, Matt. Possibly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you, you, I mean, you say that, we've got a gold medalist on the stage right there, reading the boulders, you know, you are entirely correct. One of those athletes could be winning that gold medal, but tonight it is all about the qualification for Paris 2024. One of these men will walk away with their ticket, which is huge. It really is massive, and it will mean that they can go away, concentrate on their training, and don't need to worry about the rest of the OQS next year. But right now, the men are on the stage. You can see them framed in those spotlights. Eight men have made it through to this stage. Stage, and only one will be the winner. Nikolai Iznik from Austria. He won a massive boulder competition at the European Games a couple of summers ago. And then Mejdi Schalk, well, he left things so, so late in the boulder shorter. It was, uh, it was a dodgy round in semi-finals, but he pulled it back. It was, and we, we often refer to Mejdi as a, a boulder specialist, but he's done some special things on routes to, to pull it back as well. So, yeah. I mean, all of these guys are in contention this evening. Some looking much more favoured than others, but yeah, all of them here, they, any of them could take it. Exactly. Yannick Floe, for example, there he is from Germany. Very, very strong physical climber. Doesn't love a slab, but loves to pull hard, and he'll enjoy some of the boulders coming up. And then Philip Schenk from Italy. Again, an all-rounder, maybe leaning towards the boulder, but he's right in the middle next to Sam Avazu there. Philip Schenk has a chance. And that's the thing with this competition, because everything kind of starts at zero once we hit these finals. It's just about these points. Forget about everything else. Of course, it will count towards count back. But fundamentally, these eight athletes all have the same opportunity. And then Sam Avazu is waiting. The only French male, sorry, two French male in this final. And what a performance from his teammate early on with Oriane Berton. Are we giving spoilers away? I think are we, we should. Are we doing it? I mean, okay. goodness me, it happened in the same day, isn't it? Yeah, his teammate <laughs> taking that gold medal. Incredible from Oriane. She is in the audience somewhere with her Olympic glasses on. I'm sure we'll see her later. And then we talked about an Olympic champion. Well, there he is, Alberto Hines Lopez from Spain. At 21, he won when he was 18. He'd love to get another opportunity for a medal. Announced as the best climber in the world. Adam Andres certainly has pedigree. World champion at 16, multiple wins to his name. And Adam Andra has made no secret of how important this comp is. There he is. The French crowd love Adam. He had such a long queue for autographs the other day. Unfortunately, he had to leave. I think he needed to go get some rest after <laughs> the semi-finals round. And there were children in tears, but they were very um, excited to come back. And he spent a lot of time with them this morning, as we saw. So, yeah, great great to see him being so kind to the, to the fans. Yeah, nice one, Adam. And finally, Toby Roberts. He's qualified in first place. Had a great boulder round yesterday, looking very, very strong. His lead is uh, pretty impressive as well. So Toby Roberts, one of the favourites for tonight. And I'm going to try and be as unbiased as possible. I keep getting asked who's my favourite to win this evening. And of course, I would love to see a fellow Brit get their Olympic ticket. But of course, I would love to see them all. And yeah, it's 
it's really set up to be a fight. Toby, of course, he had the the semi-finals of his life. He's come away from Bern, gone away and worked on some really important skills, and he's displayed prowess in those skills in such a short amount of time. It's really impressive to see those improvements. So we've said it, and it is, it's kind of his to lose now after that semi-finals round, but the, the scores are reset, like you said. Yes, exactly. And this is some of the semi-final highlights from yesterday. You can go back and watch this free on the RFSE YouTube channel if you want to watch the whole thing, and it is worth watching because it was a good round and there is Adam Ondra leaping across the slab did well on that final slab as well up towards the 25 leaving him in a very good position for that lead round and you can see how much that means to him there he's Nikolai a very good boulder and he performed well as well he qualified in last place Gus got a ticket this is Mika he's not in the final but uh, he had a good performance yesterday as well, the current Boulder World Champion. Came close, but couldn't quite book his place in the finals here this afternoon. We keep saying this evening, it feels like this evening, it's actually <laughs> only coming after 2.30 Central European time, so uh, yeah, not evening yet. Sam Abazu, keep an eye on that man. I said to Shauna just before we started that he could take this, he has potential, but Toby Roberts we're seeing here did look on a different level. In a similar way to Orianne earlier, looked a bit a cut above the rest. Toby is in that situation, but nerves can play a big part for him. This is the lead wall from earlier on, or yesterday. Had that very strange feature under the roof, the big green set of holds, and that's where Mejdi fell. He had his head in his hands for a while. He thought he might have messed it up, but it was okay. Yannick Floe getting a little further into the purples. Uh, he slipped going to that side pull as well. There is Philip Schenk wrestling his way through. It almost feels like quite a long time ago yeah. that this happened, doesn't it? I'd kind of forgotten that these features existed. I saw <laughs> it, I was like, oh yes, that was great. It goes very, very quickly. There is Alberto. I think he has more of an underdog chance here today, but you just never know. I mean, we've watched him win gold. He can deal with the pressure. He sure can. He knows how to really put in a performance when it counts, but as does Adam Andre and as does this guy, only 18 years old, but really, really dominating on the scene and definitely did in the semi-finals. It must be great for you because for people who don't know who Shauna is, and you should do, just Google it for goodness sake. But Shauna, you, you were at GB athlete, you were at the Olympics, you know exactly what they're going through. Yeah, I spent over a decade competing on the international climbing circuit, um, originally focused on bouldering and then and then focusing on the Olympics. Uh, it was a real privilege to be there to, to win a medal at the qualification, but then, yeah, struggled a little bit at the Games itself. But it's this moment where the qualification really starts to, to get underway. We've seen how the athletes dealt with their performances in Bern. So the athletes that did qualify You've mentioned a few times there's European athletes missing from this event, and that's because they are pre-qualified. Yes, exactly. So a couple of names out of this comp. Nikolai Uznik will climb first here. And the scoring is different. I talked about it a little bit, and we will go through it again in more detail later on. But for the time being, that's our wall. 20, 10, and 0 degrees, and that is our first boulder. Shauna, you were fascinated by this one, saying it's kind of a bit old school in terms of its approach with those crimps uh, on the orange volumes. Yeah, I like that though. I kind of like that it's a bit old school. Um, and when I say that, there's no wild comp style moves. So this boulder is the, the strength boulder of the round. It's more basic, but it does require a lot of tension, a lot of concentration. I think if the athletes lapse in concentration, we'll see them slip and, and falter. Um, so yeah, an unusual climb to see in a finals of an event like this. Yeah, I would agree with you. And I love the way the setters have used that arete, that corner feature. It's kind of a, it's, yeah, it's, it's a good looking boulder. So Nikolai will get to grips with it first of all. It's just 23, is Nikolai. I always forget that. He's pretty experienced. 
And as we said, the scores are reset. We're on zero. The athletes will get five points getting to the first zone, 10 points getting to the second, 25 for a top and minus 0.1 for every unsuccessful attempt. And you can see that five and a 10 on your screen there. Nikolai straight away into the first couple of holds. High left foot bumps up towards the first zone. So he's got points on the board now. Up towards a very nasty crimp. The setters described that right hand as the worst hold the athletes would have seen at this competition. Yeah, the route setter has made that very clear. And Nikolai making quite quick work to get up high here. A risky move there from him, but clearly his finger strength is really impressive. A very quick attempt to get up and close to that 25, but not managing to weight that orange volume. There isn't a foothold on there. He's going to have to stand up, and his fingers look like they've been put through their paces. These holds are minute. Yeah, and sharp. I mean... Yeah, Nikolai's uh, putting talk on there. Yeah, we have to remember these athletes have had quite a few days uh, of competing. And, you know, it, it, it's tough on the skin, this. I think we got a little look at um, what his thoughts were on, yeah. on those holes from his face just now. A bit of a, a look of disgust almost. But although the holds may be uncomfortable for the climbers, I actually really like that we have a boulder like this in this round because it is a little bit old school. It's, t it's taking me back. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, to be honest. I love a, love a bit of crimp, so uh, I love a bit of crimp. That doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? I love some crimps. <laughs> it's been a long day. It's been a long been. few days. <laughs> I know. Well, Nikolai, I don't think he'll go too many times at this. The fact he was looking that much at his skin, I think he's just going to wait here. Two minutes on the clock. There we go. You don't want to open up a split this early on in the competition. When we say open up a split, just to explain that a little bit, their fingertips, their skin starts to wear down. For those of you who don't know, the athletes will do kind of skin maintenance. I know that Toby has been taping his skin in warm-up to ensure that he has enough enough fingertip skin for this round. Um, if they were to go through a pad, so a fingertip, they will be asked to tape it. They're not allowed to climb while it's bleeding. Exactly, so that's and what they have to deal with. Unfortunately, that happens. <laughs> yes. These climbers will push themselves so hard that they will literally wear through their fingertips. Crazy. Well, this is where Nikolai fell before. Up with the left hand. He couldn't keep the tension before. Can he find a foot this time? She's pushing really hard through that foot. There's nothing on there. This boulder is set to go left or right hand at the top. We, we don't think there's an easier method. Both work. So it's going to be interesting to see how the field is split on which hand they go with, assuming we see more athletes up heading towards that 25. And a great look at that top hold. There is very little on it. Yeah, it's a small edge they're going for. That and it's hidden as well. It's blind for them. It's a small edge and it's, it would be quite a positive edge if it was the other way up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. All right, so men's number one. You can see number three next to it. That'll be in action later on. Um, if you've watched from earlier on, you'll know that we have two athletes climbing at the same time as we progress through this boulder. And Nikolai is waiting, but he's going to have to go soon here. We're ticking down with time. 28 seconds, he's going to have to motor, but it's not that long, this bowler. And he can do it quickly, but he drops it. Miss the kick over towards the left there. Nikolai will go one more time in 16 seconds. He's looking really solid on these first few moves. The clock is ticking down, but I do think this has been a great start for him. Yeah, he's done well, that high zone, important. And yeah, he's gone. I don't think he really wanted to commit to that crimp if he was going to run out of time. He's looking down at his skin and he's definitely looking frustrated. An understandable feeling when he's just literally tickled the 25 points. Yeah, it's a tough sport, this isn't it? Brutal. That was the 10. He used it so he got the points. That was the top. Slapped it. Couldn't hold it. All right, Medjdi Shark has just been announced. There's French flags flying. And he's out onto the mats. So, Majesty gave us a scare during the semis. Um, kind we of were holding our breath. We really were. I was nervous for him. And I know his dad, who I had a chat with, is uh, he could barely speak. He was so nervous, <laughs> put it like that. Opting to go was much more static than Nikolai. The setters, they spoke about the fact that this move can be done in a few different ways. And 
Mejdi and Nikolai giving us great examples of that here. Yeah, he swaps the ooh, nearly slips there with that right foot. He's trying to find the right foot to have. Now that looks better as he gets that high left in. All right, up towards the five, but that's the nasty one, and it gets better as he rotates through it towards the left. Oh, but fighting hard here. He breathes, I think, for one of the first times there. Catches the other crimp. So much body tension as that leg flicks backwards. One move away now from Edgedy. Oh, and you see a different approach there, right hand over, whereas Nikolai going left hand again. Um, I, I'm enjoying seeing the guys on a, a more basic board or something. We've not seen in competition for quite some time. This is what competitions used to look like about a couple of decades ago. <laughs> um, one thing I want to talk about is the fact that for the French athletes, there's two in this final, and we saw a French athlete take a ticket earlier in the women's, and that actually means quite a lot. The French are guaranteed to have one man, one man and one woman at Paris because they, they get a host nation spot both in speed and in boulder and lead. So there is that, but they can only qualify two athletes maximum. So if they qualify by the qualification pathways, they don't get the extra host nation spot. However, what changes if an athlete qualifies here, the fifth ranked athlete will get to go to OQS. So earlier I saw Zelia in floods of tears thinking she was upset. She was overjoyed because Orion winning this morning means Zelia now gets to fight for an Olympic spot at OQS. So not only did their own performances mean a lot, it kind of changes things within the teams too. Yeah, I, th I think it's a good point to make because it's easy to think about just a gold medal at this competition, but the points are important and that OQS series. So yeah, there's a lot on the line for some of these. And Mejdi might be one of them. He's looking back up now. He's had two attempts. He has, and the, the clock is starting to tick down. And this isn't a boulder you want to take many tries on because of the amount of skin. But not just that. You can see how hard he's having to work to do these moves. They, it, it looks basic, and we've talked about the fact that it is a relatively basic boulder. That does not mean it's easy in the slightest. This is a very difficult climb, and it will be taking a lot and zapping their energy significantly. Definitely. I mean, if you think back, the last basic boulder I can remember was in Salt Lake, and most flashed it. So the setters have done well to set something like this, but still make it challenging for the athletes. It's, it's a good piece of work. Right, Mejdi pushes away, upgrades that left foot, pressing in. So remember, he's already got the points for the low and high zone and falls. And that little bit of frustration that can creep in with Mejdi, that can cause him to falter sometimes. He leaves with 22 seconds. Yeah, he's won three gold medals at Boulder World Cup, so we know that he knows how to, to climb these boulders. And I don't think we've seen Mejdi at his best self in this competition. He had a, he had a tricky event at the first opportunity to qualify at the World Championships. So it's it's hard to see Mejdi struggling out there. I, I really think he's in contention for an Olympic spot, whether that's here or not is unknown, but for sure at the OQS. But with there only being two spots in the line and with there being such a strong French team, there's got to be a lot of pressure on the French athletes, maybe maybe more than anyone else here. Yep, I agree with you. It's, it's that kind of a team. There's so much depth in that. All right, Yannick Floe runs out now. I would imagine, <laughs> he says, careful not to commentate and curse him, <laughs> that he's going to enjoy this kind of a boulder. Let's find out, shall we? Lays that towel down. We talked a lot about that in the women's, how much chalk the athletes pick up from their feet, and you don't want loads of chalk and dust on your feet. You don't want any, ideally. No, <laughs> it's true. Well, those speed climbers, bizarrely, chalk their feet. I need to ask them why. Yeah. Boulder is... Not so do much. Not. No, not so much. <laughs> All right, Yannick gets underway. High left foot, drills it in. There's a little pocket on that jib, which is quite interesting. It's a new hold, uh, the, the the white one he's standing on now. Yeah, so there's a new cheetah range on the Rock City volumes here. Um, the cheetah little crimps, the white ones that you can see, and then the big orange Rock City volumes. But Yannick not seeming to look like he's having to put too much effort in just yet. 
No, cruising at the moment. Head back there, though. That head back is a sign that he's having to work a little bit harder, a big flick of the head. And now moving his feet around, he's maybe not so comfortable. He left his feet really low, which in that position, because the hold he was going to is a vertical, he had no opposition, so he really struggled to push into that with his fingers and his shoulder. I think he'll make an adjustment. I don't think we'll see him try and do that in the same method. Um, he was almost pencil-like, really straight. He definitely needs some sort of opposition. Ideally, a right foot up, maybe a left foot would work, but yeah, he needs to be pushing into that handhold. Okay, so that's what he has to do, making that adjustment. You could see the second he fell, his eyes were like fixed where he, where he let go. He's trying to figure it out. Yeah, and Yannick has been uh, commenting on his Instagram how he's been playing around on this giant slab. Normally a fan of the steeper <laughs> climbs, but I think he will be enjoying this one. Maybe not the fact that the holes are, are taking a bit out of the skin, but yeah, he's someone who likes to do a lot of pulling on the wall and, and not so much a big fan of the jumping around. However, he's he's a competition climber, so he needs to be able to do it. Yeah, exactly, it's kind of part of the game now, isn't it? And he obviously can do it because he's in the finals. Yes. Good point. Oh, but he's struggling now, nearly overbalanced there. It's almost like he doesn't really want to lean back on that right hand. Now he does once he's got the foot up. Yeah, shake of the head there. I think he knows he made some silly mistakes, but he's still on and he can still keep climbing. A big drop knee and a chalk up before he hits that nasty crimp. And he won't want to hang around too long on that. Rotates through. This boulder, the first go they do it, seems okay, and then it gradually seems to get progressively worse. Yeah, I wonder if it's to do with skin, to do with their fingertips warming up, um, and it feeling a bit harder, potentially, um, or their mind starting to wander, and, you know, if your, your mind's on the end of the climb, often you can lose focus and wobble off lower down. So they need to really keep that focus. The root setters have been very conscious of putting the holds on this climb in a way that forces them to stay really considered through their movements. Yeah, it's been well thought through. The setters were setting it right up to the last moment and they hadn't have long. The crowd were only kicked out for about 45 minutes. All right, Yannick goes again, 46 seconds. Lots of time. Yannick making mistakes. Yeah, he's starting to fluster a little bit here. Much better, he's much higher in his hips, but a foot slip there. Yeah, Yannick just not quite connecting things yet, and I think he's going to leave. Yeah, he does say goodbye. And you're right, I I would have expected Yannick to kind of breeze through that one, so it's a bit of a surprise, and these athletes had their observation period, so he knows what's coming next, and I imagine he knows that that's maybe a climb he, he would have been confident on and would have expected to do well on getting those those high points, yes, he got the 10 and secured that, but there's a big difference between 10 and 25. There's 15 points, of course, but yeah. um, that difference really plays when we start to connect all the points together and the round progresses. Absolutely, yeah, we saw that happen in the lead as well, how much of a difference it makes. All right, Yannick's done. Next athlete will be Philip Schenk. So there is Philip, stands on the stage from Italy, just 23. Let's see how he deals with these crimps. He won't know it, but I think it's quite important on this first go before your body and your skin realizes what you're trying to do. Hits the palm. just awkward to get your foot up, but once he's in, then he can lean back and chalk up. Chalk up. When do we ever see men in competitions like this chalking up? That's a good we point. We very, very rarely see men climbing with chalk bags on, much more in the women's. Yeah. And I think that's because the, the women are able to kind of hold positions and the climbs oh. are a, li a little different maybe. I, d I don't know. Yeah. but. Yeah, it's really interesting and they've all come out wearing chalk bags, or most, most of them have come out wearing chalk bags. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point. I hadn't actually thought of that. <laughs> I mean, it's hot here in the stadium and it's getting hotter all day. Maybe that's part of it. I actually think it's just this climb and the fact that the style allows for them to take a moment, which is very fascinating. Usually, 
The men's climbs are very physical, very droppable. There's not moments available to chalk up. Whereas because of the style of this climb, there are those moments, there is that space. But that's going to be massively playing on their minds as well because it's not just a case of executing on the wall. You get time to reflect whilst you're on the wall, which is something the men very rarely get in competition. Yeah, it's true. All right, well, Philip has that chalk it up time. And off he goes again. You can see the scoreboard now on the bottom left. So no top so far, high zones from everyone. And the position decided on count back as they've all got the same score. So Philip gets that drop knee in. He's struggled up to here before. And he falls again though. Philip not managing to work this out yet. Not managing to work this out yet, but he's actually having a really good performance in this competition. He's currently ranked 49th in the overall world ranking. So that should hopefully secure him a spot for the Olympic qualifier series next year. Um, that won't be, that list won't be confirmed until all of the qualification events this year have taken place. And when I say that, this is the European part of the qualification. We've had the world championships, then we have each continental championships. And at the end of the year those athletes that are pre-qualified will be taken out of the current world ranking to decide who gets to go to the olympic qualifier series it's rather complicated it is i'm very glad i don't have access to that spreadsheet <laughs> right philip shake with a minute to go we'll pull back on the wall he's only got the zone zone needs to get at least that 10 obviously he starts to drop behind and as we've seen if you start to drop behind it's hard to pull it back up to the five that left foot shaking. I told you, he's just in a small sort of hole on that left foot. There's not a lot. You can see the shake he's got going on. And he's changing things up. And you can also see the difference in finger strength. And I, I'm not trying to do Philip a disservice here, but Yannick, Nikolai, they hit that hold. Mejdi, they hit that hold, and they were able to hold it and move through it. So, you know, Philip is... As a younger athlete, obviously some of them are, but they all have different strengths and weaknesses, right? And I think for him there, that, that hole just wasn't the one today. It's There's not much else you can do other than really grit and bear it and, and crimp as hard as you possibly can on such a minute edge. Exactly that. Well, Philip goes without that high zone, so slightly behind on the first boulder. Have a little pause now before Sam Avazu will come out and uh, this stadium will go insane. So let's check the scores while we wait, though. So, tens all round. Similar scores and draws at the moment. Philip Schenk on five. So that means the athletes got to the high zone in the same amount of attempts that first go. So Sam Avazu, Alberto Inez Lopez, Adam Ondra and Toby to come. And we get to see another boulder, Shauna. We do. I'm excited about this one. And interestingly, the men really struggled to, to stand on their feet on a boulder very similar to this in a previous round. So it's... Does it mean of the setters that they're making them do it again? I don't know. I actually kind of like it. Yeah. Um, and I just can't wait to see how they get on with this. Yeah, me too. It's worse than it looks on your cameras as well. <laughs> it's uh, first thing I saw, I was like, oh my goodness, it's a ledge. Come on, they can walk across that. It's not, trust me, when you get up there. I do think it's so easy to sit at home and be like, oh, I reckon I could do that. Yeah. And even if you could do that, could you do it with hundreds of people watching the stadium with an Olympic ticket on the line, <laughs> with all that pressure mounting after all the climbing that they've done? Yeah. If you can, then why aren't you here? Exactly. Get to your federation. <laughs> knock on some doors. All right, Sam Avazu, the flags wave again as he approaches the first boulder. And then Nikolai Uznik. Now you can see now how this rotation works. He's on M2, the slab. And let's see how he gets the grips of it. He nearly flashed boulder one. Couldn't get as close after that. Straight to the five. And kind of pinching that pebble-like feature. And the setters wanted that first move to be... A little bit risky to get some separation between the athletes. Um, off camera, Sam had his first attempt at Boulder 1, and we'll see him pulling back on shortly, I imagine. Yeah, exactly. And Nikolai standing up again. Nikolai is into the five just off your screen. Sam Avazu starts his 
What's he trying to do now? Yeah, trying to get that left foot up. It's not looking so comfortable there, but maybe just settling into the flow of this round and, and trying to figure this out. With them having pre-read these boulders, it can be interesting to see how they approach their climb. And it, it's often very different to semi-finals and qualifiers where they don't get that observation period because they come out with a vision or a plan. And when that doesn't work, you get to see how they deal with that pressure and how they deal with making big adjustments if it's not working and problem solving. These are bolder problems, yeah. of course. Yeah, those experience can count for that as well. And all of these athletes are pretty experienced in terms of finals as well. So they'll, they'll have been in this position before. It's just dealing with it now. Nikolai on the slab. Now, Sean, everyone always says on slabs, heels down. He's putting as much rubber on there instead, but you can see that left heel pushing down. Yeah, and he's turned his foot to try and get a bit more rubber on as well. He's not looking comfortable, but he's definitely trying hard. And you can see, you see his shoulders come back that many pulled out from the wall. But right now, the stadium, all eyes are on Sam as Nikolai brushes the holes. But Sam is nearing the finish of the first boulder. Two holes to go. 25 yeah. is in sight. It's right there, isn't it? Left hand on the crib, right foot pressing in opposition. He's one move away. We know how hard this is, though. He's trying to upgrade the feet. This is going to be a top for Sam. He just needs to match it. You say just. But this is a difficult match. Oh. Can he make it work? He can. That left toe clawing in, only just making that match. And wow, did the crowd love that. And yeah, there was a moment. It looked like he was going. Sam has a, lot, a cheeky look over towards where Nikolai is, which is fair enough, and then leaves the stage. Could have been checking the clock. Maybe he was. <laughs> <laughs> Don't throw him under the bus there, man. Ah, oh, never. <laughs> All right, Nikolai starts going towards the right. It's just leaving that zone hold is hard, isn't it? Leaving that zone hold is hard. Also, not kind of taking any disheartened from the fact that Sam just did the boulder Nikolai couldn't oh, yeah, do. True. So he's, he's on the mat at the same time. If Nikolai isn't aware that Sam just topped, then... His focus is superior to anybody else's. I think he, he's got to know, right? So there's that playing on his mind, I imagine, very slightly, or or maybe maybe not, maybe more so. Um, but he has to put all of his focus into this moment, because right now, all that matters to him is this boulder in front of him. Yeah, absolutely, but it is a tough ask, as you say. All right, well, focus Nikolai, hits the five. He's got 23 seconds, and he's yet to get this move over towards the high zone. Matches with both feet, tries to find the right. There's a screw hold he's going to stand in. He's got nine seconds. He just needs to go and use this zone. Misses it with the left hand. And another frustration for Nikolai. Yeah, I imagine that left hand method probably wasn't going to work. He was aiming for a palm on a no texture part of a volume. So I think he might have slid off there if he had have got into the position. He didn't quite make it. I think it was a kind of a last ditch effort. I do think to get that 10, you need to be going right hand, but I am happy to be proved wrong. Yeah, we'll have to see. There's three to go for Boulder one. This is at the top for Sam. And he really struggled to match it. Got a good left toe, as you said, clawing away, and that allowed him to match it. And Nick is Nikolai on the zone hold. That zone hold is terrible. Horrible. Isn't it? it reminds me of like a Peak District pebble you see halfway <laughs> up a trad route. <laughs> well, Alberto is on for Spain. Mejdi is on the slab. And Alberto, who spent the year where he won the Olympics just competing at every single event he could possibly get to. He loves that comp experience to get himself into the zone. Both athletes up very quickly. Yeah, true. Oh, Medjli gets just a toe down now, looking more confident than Nikolai was at this point. And looking calm. When Medjli is calm, he can do some really great things on the wall. He hits the 10 with relative ease, I might say, through that section right now. But it's definitely not over yet. This last section of the slab boulder is incredibly tricky. Yeah, he's got to move that foot forward. He's got to make a foot swap. And then the next foothold has the smallest dot of friction you'll ever see on a hold, where his right foot is now. But when he does slip off it, that's how small that dot of friction is. Yeah, it's horrendous. <laughs> I wish I could show you on screen. Big jump. 
coming in a minute, but no, Alberto falls before that. Similar to Yannick, he left his feet low, which meant he had no opposition going into that hold. Both Yannick and Alberto almost, almost reaching up to that hold, expecting more from it, expecting it to be more positive, but because it isn't, because there isn't a good edge on it, they really do need a foot high or a foot pushing in towards that hold so they're able to stick it. But Medjdi wasting very little time here. He's looking supremely confident here, just trusting those feet. But as I said, it, it balances off backwards. The margins are small on a slab like this, aren't they? Just a little wobble and you're gone. They are, and I think when you fall off the end of a slab, it can be quite easy to lose focus on the start because your mind is really focusing on what you need to do when you get to that section where you fell. And we, we do see it a lot where athletes aren't able to repeat what they did in their first attempt. Maybe it's that, that first go psych. Yes, I know what you mean. And instead of you trust instincts and then you think about it too much, perhaps, <laughs> and it messes you up. Alberto with his drop knee looking confident. Philip was way lower when he tried to do that. Alberto stands up a bit higher. Yeah, he's looking strong through this section. Here is a really feisty move where it's a bit relentless. You can see that head flick back as they stick it. Alberto much better. You see that right foot is really pushing into the five as he steps up, both feet up. Can he make this last move work though? Oh, so close, had a right hand on it, couldn't hold it. Medjdi is back to this position as well. He needs to trust that right foot. It's a scary move to trust. Not quite. One hand on the 25, but it is not enough. The climbers need to control the hold that has the number on if they want to be awarded those points, which of course they do. Yeah, so no send for Mejdi. Now better shaking that hand. We know how nasty the crimp is. And we chatted with the root setters through these boulders. That first boulder we were told if an athlete if a climber gets their hand to it they will hold on and I'm I don't I was gonna argue against that and I mean we've been proven right that hold is terrible up there yeah it's not great is it all right Mejdi goes again less than a minute on the clock it, it looks so solid he's a heel then to rock over makes the foot match needs to keep strong a little bit more pop on this 40 seconds he might have a go for two if he doesn't get it this time oh that was so close but what a match that was so close and that was so cool what happened there is he hit the top hole he started falling off and he saved it with a left toe hook i hope we get a replay of that because that was really impressive slab climbing from Mejdi. He made a comeback in semi-finals on the slab. It was what got him into this final. So that was great to see him keeping his calm and composure. And Alberto as well, he's nearing that 25, but what an awkward, awkward crossover and not enough time for another go. No, once again, only one top so far on boulder number one. It's proving to be a tricky one. And only one on boulder number two. Yes. So far. So far, <laughs> a few to come. <laughs> All right, Adam Andre is waiting. I like these boulders. They're cool, aren't they? Yeah, they're, uh, they're certainly... Ch I think the women's was a bit... Uh, well, we were told a bit easier. The, the men's uh, looks just as tricky as the semi-finals to me. Really brutal for them. The women's easier than the semi-finals, and that was yes. because it was a low-scoring round. And, yeah, the root setters, they really think about, about the show. And you can see here, you just can't quite see his foot, oh. but you can see him looking down at it, that laser focus. His left arm creating as much tension as he can on absolutely nothing. And, yeah, Alberto getting so very close, slapping that 25, but not being not going to be awarded those points. So Adam Andre given the nudge by one of our officials there. He runs out to begin his finals. A true legend of the sport, but it doesn't change how much Adam wants it. Every single climb that he's put in front of, you know, I swear, he has more psych for climbing than anyone I've ever met. Yes, it's all he talks about, honestly. I've had a few conversations with him just about climbing. <laughs> All right, he's up and away, as is uh, Yannick in the background. Hits the zone, both of them, first time of asking. Adam into the nasty crimp, he's got to rotate through that, bumps out the misses. Yeah, Adam not looking comfortable in that position. Um, and Yannick not looking like he wants to stand on that, that hold either. Both athletes looking a little bit unsettled on these boulders. Yeah, Yannick has been working hard at his slab game. And in fact, when he does a slab, he's absolutely over the moon. So I can imagine his reaction if he gets this done. 
And we know that he can do slabs. He proved that to himself in Bern. And look at him here. He's really stood on his feet and weighting them so well. Like you said, dropping those heels. And he's reached over and secured the 10 already. He is. Look at that. I wasn't breathing when he was doing that and uh, that creep over. I just don't know how he climbs slabs in glasses. I am a glasses wearer. And it's, yeah, it scrapes away. So good work, Yannick. <laughs> All right, he bumps out. That's a good shot of the first jib with no texture. But he is in an OK position here, so he can chalk for a moment. Yeah, you can see him getting a little bit of composure, but laser focus in his eyes. He looks for his foot, secures his foot, and then his eyes are straight to what's next. The small hold you can see at the top of the, the big long volume, that's just there to stop them trying to crimp the edge. That is not something that they can use. They can't hold it. That's why they're going from here straight to the 25 in a very, I was going to say a very dynamic movement. Yannick looking for something to try and help him go slowly, but I think we'll see him realize that is unlikely to work and therefore go for the, the Mejdi option of fast. Yeah, true. He's thinking about it for a long time, isn't he? before committing. Goes for the fast, but going backwards. Goal going backwards, going out away from the wall. Yeah, leaning out with both his hips and his shoulders, so not, not able to make that work that time, but enough time to get up there again. Look at the uh, locked off crimp Adam has with his right hand. That is just bomber in there. It's, oh, and then does that head flick back as he catches the side pull. The locked off crimp and the wild body positions, he's really good at, at understanding his movement, his strengths, his weaknesses, and making it work for him. Okay, we look for the heel underneath. It's not really there. Went for the left like Nikolai did, but no go. A bit of a grimace as you look down at his skin there. Yeah, we do mention skin more than any other sport, I would imagine, but it is <laughs> so important to climbing. Trust me, if you're if you've never watching this and you love the sport but you've never climbed, do go and try it. Please, 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 because you'll realise how brilliant it is. And then you can have a skin conversation as well with us. Up he goes towards <laughs> the five. <laughs> that angle makes it look like it uh, leans back, but it's zero degrees there. It does, it really makes it look like a, a very slabby slab and it, it, it really isn't, it is totally vertical this climb. It climbs like a slab because of the way the volumes are put on for the feet, but it's very much requiring them to be conscious, considered calm as well. If we see anyone fluster here, I think they, they will lose it quite quickly. But Yannick moving through that so smoothly, again, really cool climbing for him, but losing it, see how he, he his pace changed. He went a lot faster with his foot, unfortunately. And, um, yeah, not going to be enough time for another go for either of these athletes now. Wow, well, some surprises going on here. Adam can't send it. We've only seen one top on that boulder. And Adam, he was so dominant in the qualification round of this competition just a few days ago. So, it, a few days ago. Was that yesterday? God, right. Well, I, yes, I they were semi-finals. Semi I can't even keep Day up before now. was cool. Oh, just, was so, yeah, a few days ago, sorry. Um, and then Toby looking incredibly dominant in the semi-finals yesterday. But, yeah, if you were going to bet on someone after qualies, it, it, it would have been Adam yeah. after the performance that he had. So, yeah, an interesting start for him. And I'm surprised that he didn't do that boulder. Yeah, it's more of a... A thinker, this men's round early on anyway. The women's kind of exploded out of the blocks. There's complications going on here. All right, to uh, Toby, let's talk about Toby. Sean, get all of your bias out of the way. Tell me, <laughs> tell me about Toby, because he's, he's an amazing young man. He sure is, and he's looking very strong in this competition. You know, Toby, he he struggled a little bit in Burton. He's the first to admit that, but he's gone away, worked on weaknesses. One of his weaknesses that he didn't need to work on is the, the basic strength, finger strength, power pulling, and we've seen him win World Cups in both Boulder and lead. So we know that he's capable of doing all of these boulders. We know he's capable of topping the lead route later. So can he walk away from this event with an Olympic ticket? We are yet to find out but he's looking in cruise mode right now. He really is, easily up with the left hand. One move away on his flash attempt, but we know it's a hard one. Adjusts the feet, tries to find something for the left, can't, slaps left, and yeah, it always looked like he was going. Yeah, so he, what happened there is he got the right foot up and he was looking for a left foot, something to pull him into the wall, and his shoulders started to pivot. I'm surprised that I expected a quick top from Toby on that. I thought he I thought he had it in the bag. I think he'll make some adjustments here. I, 
I wonder if he'll try and do the cross like Sam did for the last move, going right hand, not left hand. I think that'll suit him a little better if he can sink into that, that left shoulder a little bit more. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, tough start for Toby. Let's see if he can reset. And let's find out if Philip's feeling slabby today. He starts the moves out right foot, right in the very middle. It is dual text that it's not like the athletes are going to stand on it, but it does limit the places they can stand. And just to explain the dual text, so the, the darker purple sections of these holes, they have no texture whatsoever on them. And the slightly lighter purple sections have a little bit of texture, um, but not as much as you might want. But that's where the athletes will be standing and pulling on. If they are to hit a no texture part of the hold, it's going to be very difficult for their foot or their hand to stay. Yeah. And we just caught the dot of friction on the high jib eagle-eyed people could have seen that then it's it's very small and also to note the turquoise section of the the bigger volumes that is also no texture so they can't reach out to that and pull on it because from here it really looks like they could yeah. but yeah there's, there's nothing there to hold on to that's no, a good point it does look like they can go down so Philip will stick to the uh, grippy bit of that hold near the tent just keep an eye on Toby as well as he gets that left hand in. He's that one move away. He's going to go left again, but ugh, closer. Yeah, and that hold, it is so bad. And if you hit it with any movement, it's just pulling you off the wall like we saw Toby there. He needs to hit it and stay totally still so his body isn't pulling away from the wall. Toby, he he's had a, a great round in semi-finals, walking away from the boulder and lead, very satisfied. He went away from Bern, worked so hard on his weaknesses and I was chatting with his dad earlier and he, he said in some ways it's already like he's won because he's been able to go away, show that he can really make massive gains and come back and, and put them down in competition. Of course, that Olympic ticket is on the line and every athlete here wants to get that. So, so maybe that could be the cherry on top for Toby. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny you say that. He, uh, he said the same thing to me. He was like, if Toby doesn't get it, he'll be okay. And I looked at him and was like, really? <laughs> but he's only 18 years old. Every competition he does, he's just, he really, he wants to climb everything that's put in front of him. He is so motivated for competing, yeah. as he should be, because what a year he's had winning lead and boulder. But right now we can see the slab again and 10 points and 25 in sight for Philip. Yeah, it's right there, isn't it? One last boosty move for Philip. Not quite. Yeah, his hips were out. He was, it was looking very unlikely that he was going to hold that, but that is the end of that rotation. A surprise, a big surprise. Yeah, big surprise. That Only is... one top on the first boulder, and suddenly Sam is looking really good. Of course, it's a long way to go, but... Yeah, an important 25 points that Sam just got there, putting him at the at the front of the pack. Yeah, there's a couple of athletes I was pretty sure would have sent that. Toby was one of them, couldn't do it though. Had that left hand slap for a second, and you see the puff of chalk in his hand came off it. This was Philip, looked comfortable until the very end, where he looked less comfortable. Yeah, going from looking, like you said, quite comfortable to suddenly kind of not comfortable yeah. and I wonder if that is just a case of the movement through the midsection being very delicate, the last section being much more dynamic. Yeah, okay, well here's the score. Mejdi Shark is ahead. Remember he's also had a go at boulder number two. It's quite hard to understand these scores when we're at this stage in the comp because not all of the athletes have climbed all of the boulders at the same time, but it does give you an idea. Yeah, it can be a little um, a little bit confusing when you look at the mid-round, but I do like how we see two boulders at the same time. Yes, I love it. There's so much action in there. Now, this 3D graphic has changed quite a lot, but we'll go through that in a sec. So fundamentally, this boulder is the same. However, there are differences from what you'll see on your screen in a minute. Towards the zone, absolutely fine, that's as normal. And then dropping down to the left, that blocker hold next to the one on the arete, that's now gone. The 10 is the same, however, the one next to the 10 has been rotated <laughs> to a different position, and the 25 has been tweaked a little bit as well. So, it's close, but uh, there have been some changes. And the reason that we don't see those changes on the screen is because these graphics take a long time to make. The guys do such a great job of doing those graphics, and the root setters do such a great job of tweaking the boulders right up until the last minute. So, yeah, sometimes the stars don't quite align between the two teams, and that's why it looks a little bit different. Exactly. Well, you know what's going on there. You can see it on your screen in front of you, and Nikolai gets a chance at it. And this man, Sam Avazu, if he can get this done, he will leave himself in a really good position after this, after that boulder. 
If we look at Sam's stats this year from Boulder semis and finals, he has a 50% slab success rate. So yeah, arguably it's 50-50, but I think the, the crowd energy that they're going to be giving him on this climb is, is going to be upping those stats significantly. Shoes matching the turquoise underneath, you can see there as he comes <laughs> over. Just jumping back to the climbing here, Matt. He's bumping his foot there, and what he's doing is trying to create more space between the two feet so he can do that rock over there. That was really smart climbing from him. He's staying really composed. I think he'll be carrying a lot of momentum from being the only athlete to yeah. top that first boulder. He, I expect he'll know that now because you have the opportunity to look at the scores after a boulder. But, yeah, Sam really looking good all of a sudden out of nowhere you might say but it's it's almost not in some ways because i feel like sam was definitely up there from the get-go yeah it is and look at this and nikolai hits the 25 points on the board for him good work and Sam as well, I had an eye on that replay. He was crimping the very edge between the volume and the wall. Yeah, the setters have tried very hard to make sure that's not possible, but he seems to be doing it. Wow, what a performance from Sam. Sam Abazu has suddenly raised his head and shown that he's a contender here this afternoon. That is awesome. And he had two minutes 22 left on the clock, so plenty of time to rest. Yeah, you know, when I've been asked who's taking it tonight, you would you would say Toby and you could argue Adam after this round, but Sam has been at their heels this entire event. He is just there and not faltering in this round yet. Wow, what a performance. And Nikolai too. You know, he's second attempt for him, I believe, on this boulder. So great that we get to see him on it again. We know that this is supposed to be the easiest boulder of the round, but that, that doesn't mean that it's easy by any stretch of the imagination. Very calm and collected climbing from him on this on this attempt. Looked like it was always shaking the wall down there as he celebrated <laughs> on the top. Hopefully not shaking Sam off. Yes, yeah, so hopefully not. That would, <laughs> well, be, not shaking that would be an appeal, you'd imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alberta comes onto the slab. Mejdi runs down to the end. And as Shauna said, should be should be the most easiest. That's not English. Sh the <laughs> M3 should be the easiest boulder. Theoretically. Theoretically on paper. So, for those who are a little bit behind, this is a chance to get those points on the board. And Medjdi, look at the confidence as he leaps through. This is his. This is his bread and butter. This. It sure is, and. I think when there is a boulder that is maybe slightly easier, and we saw that in the women's, there can be some frustration from the spectators and maybe competitors. But personally, I think it's actually a really good display of the climbers having to stay controlled, having to stay calm. And there are points on the board there, but there are points to gain and points to lose. So yeah. you, you can't, you've got to stay in contention. You've got to keep putting the efforts in. They have to climb it to get those 25 points. And personally, I like to see a climb that's that's maybe easier than, than hot, too hard because, yeah, I like to see them having to fight for those points. I agree with you. Uh, and it sparks everyone up. The audience gets on their feet. People at home hopefully really get into it. So, yeah, I'm a fan as well. And Alberto really well. I think it might be his first. No, it can't be his first go, but it's, oh, it might be. <laughs> That's it. It, is his, it is his first go. There we go. Yeah, he's just taking his time with it. Um, according to the scores that I'm looking at, it's still his first go. So, yeah, he has the, the 10 points on his first attempt, which is going to be important. But i would be more important is getting those 25. And he's looking good as he's rocks over on that foot. But he is going slow. We've seen Mejdi go fast and make it work. And we've seen Sam go slow and make it work. Reaching out towards that hold that you can see right by his hand. That hold is there to try and block oh. the top of the volume. But, wow, what he is standing on is my knew there is so little texture on the foothold so he really knows how to trust and use his feet that was really impressive climbing from alberto see me the defining thing for this comp has been the fact that it's allowed the athletes to show off their skills and that was an example you know we've seen two athletes go quickly and alberto clearly trusting his feet and doing it in a lovely smooth way and not just that coming back after getting so close to that first boulder. They're not just showing off their physical skills and their technical abilities, they're showing off their mental skills and their ability to stay focused, to stay resilient throughout a round that has been a little up and down and we're only three boulders in. I know, there's a long way to go, isn't there? All right, Adam Ondra is on the slab. He would like a top to start his big scoring. He's got a 10, of course. And Yannick over on the left. And we saw how much Mejdi just cruised this. Let's see if Yannick can do the same. Starts this swing and he's, oh, he doesn't. Just mistimed that kick. Yeah, mistimed the kick. Looking 
a little different to the other athletes that we've seen on it, a little less feisty. I think on the third boulder, you, you can't be too casual. Yes, exactly. So Yannick goes again. In fact, he's already on the wall. But right now, we're with Adam Ondra. I'm not quite enjoying that foot tap that we get to see there. It's almost dance-like. Okay. And you saw Adam there just, just lose it, just lose the balance. And, and Yannick putting a bit more into it this time because he wants that 25 points and he's going to get it on his second go. So yes, the, seeming to be the easiest boulder of the round, the root setters are right, but not not a giveaway that no. we've seen a few falls. Yeah, we have. So flashes are even more impressive. But remember, it's only minus 0.1 for every attempt. So not quite the weighting you get in a World Cup. Adam goes again, puts his foot in a hole. We don't really know what to describe. Mini volcano, maybe. <laughs> Bumps the left in, into the five. A little slip there from Adam. He's going to need to make sure he's putting a lot of weight through his feet. And it's such a fine margin. You can see his foot moving around. He was almost on the no texture part there. He's going for the foot through method, which we've seen some climbers make work, and we know both work. And now, will he go fast or will he go slow? Both work, but what can Adam make happen? He's going to go fast, hits it, does a little... I don't know what he was doing with his feet then, but... He does a little foot hop, which would make sense if there was texture on the wall. So I'm, I'm a little confused as to why he did that. <laughs> yeah. I think he hit the hold. It was good enough in order for him to pull on, and he's already out of balance. So a lot going through his mind, very instinctive in that moment for Adam. But I, I'm going to be surprised if he tries that again, because there is... There is no texture there. You saw how fast his foot slipped. And yes, we do see athletes using the no texture part of holds at times, but on this climb, I don't think it'll work. Yeah, okay. Well, let's see if he makes those adjustments. We saw it's possible to go statically. Adam, a little taller than Alberto, so that stretch might be better for him. We'll see. We've got a minute and a half, though. Lots of time. I love the way he just jumps those hands over on this five zone. Now, last time, the second Adam got this, he looked very comfortable suddenly. Let's see if it's the same. Brings that left in. Yeah, good work so far. He's thinking about creeping up, but he's going to go for the jump. Watch the feet. The same thing yeah. again. I'm really surprised. What he hasn't seen is the toe catch that Mejdi did. So Mejdi was really smart, and I almost think Mejdi instinctively looked down for something to help him stop barn dooring, so stop um, kind of falling away from the wall. Uh, the toe hook was really smart for Mejdi. Adam doesn't seem to have seen it, and what he's doing is he's hopping his foot to try and stay on that top hole because it isn't a hold that they can hold without their feet, which we've seen on this wall in the women's yeah. with Orien, for example, but because this hold is vertical, they need some opposition in order to hold it, whether it's a toe hook or a foot hop. But it's almost hard to see here how bad that purple is. There is zero friction, as you've seen his foot slip twice now. Will he make an adjustment? Will he change things up? Or will he try the same thing again? It's We're got, yet to see. He's got to do something. It's not going to work otherwise. He Oh, well, he kind of makes it work, kicking the left over. Yeah, so he got the opposition with the left foot. His right foot stayed low down. So because he pivoted, <laughs> that meant that it worked. And he is very, very happy with that. He is. I think that left foot was just in the moment. He just felt it, kicked it, and went. He didn't have that plan at all. And I think that's why he was so excited because his body just kind of reacted in the moment. So cool to see him make that adjustment yeah. instinctively. Yeah. He looked down at his foot, kind of a bit surprised that it ended up on the wall. Yeah, like that. and as soon as he realized it was stuck, he uh, got the match in very quickly. <laughs> that was great to see. Well, this is Yannick from early. He got the boulder done in two goes, so quick from him. Next up will be Toby. He's waiting in the wings and Philip. So Toby will be on the slab. Last time we get to see the slab, so enjoy that if you're a slab aficionado at home. And there is Philip down at the end. So that's the important boulder to get done. He'll have an idea of that. And for Toby, he'd like to get a 25 on the board. Let's see if he can do it. DJ, come on. There's tension <laughs> in the stadium here, come on. 
little wobble from Toby there, but he almost saved it. He didn't. Toby's been working on his slab climbing as well as his dynamic climbing. I think he'll he'll find his flow on this boulder. Just a little wobble to begin with there. And Philip, meanwhile, almost sticking at the 10 zone, but not quite, so he won't be awarded that just yet. We know that boulder three is the easiest of the round, and we say easiest, and I feel like we shouldn't use that word because it is <laughs> by far easy. Exactly, it was all subjective, isn't it? It's uh, world-class easy. All oh, right, Toby, this is where he fell before. It has to really trust that foot. Look at slow motion lean as he goes over. Gets the right foot, upgrades the hand on the crescent. And I, I can't call whether we'll see Toby go fast or slow at the end. Um, he's definitely capable of doing making both methods work, and we know they both can work. He's bringing his left hand underneath, so looking like he's going to opt for a slower method, but now changing it back up again, and we can see him kind of feeling it out on the wall. No, surprised he had that right hand. He's going to have to go up with the right, and now he changes it. Oh, look at dropping foot. down low, which is going to mean he's going to have to do a much higher stand. He's looking for something with the right hand, but he's now turned the left palm, which is allowing him to start standing up. That was a great oh. save as he hit that top hold. He started to lean backwards, but he saved it. Good climbing from Toby there, and he, he, knew, he knew he needed that. Yeah, I love the cheeky wink at someone at the top as well. Toby gets it done and has a wave and a big smile on his face as he leaves. He but looks really happy to be there. He does, doesn't he? I think he's, it's just... I mean, that's, you can see it. He just seems different from Burn. There was there was pressure on his shoulders. There was a lot going on, and this seems a bit more relaxed from Toby. Interestingly, apparently he was uh, he's been training less recently, so he has been doing less sessions, and that apparently has helped him. Philip just holds. Wow, that was a great save from Philip. All right, from here we haven't seen anyone drop it, so up to the intermediate. Looks for the heel, can't get it. Come on, Philip. Big commitment required as he throws himself in just. What a save. Great work, <laughs> Philip. Wow, big puff of the cheeks, understandably. Well, I think we all felt that one. What a save. And 25 points in the bag for Philip. These athletes need to consider their coaches' hearts. I mean, <laughs> come on, it's a lot to put them and through. Ours. And ours, exactly. Yeah, we do tend to go through every move with these athletes, and I hope you do at home. And if you are joining us, welcome to Laval, by the way. We are here for the uh, European qualifier for the Olympics. This is the men's boulder comp side, lead to come later on, and Shauna Coxie is next to me. Yeah, there's 200 points total that these athletes can gain. We won't see anyone get the full 100 in Boulder, but Sam Avazu looking like he could be quite close to that if he continues the form that he seems to be on in this round. Yeah, Sam Avazu on fire right now. The surprise, perhaps the underdog maybe coming from behind, but good from him so far. And this was Philip's face as he just caught that hole with his fingers. Look at the relief in his eyes there. Speaking with the setters, the third boulder is supposed to be easiest to go right hand, but we are yet to see anyone try that. True, yeah. Well, this is the scoreboard. After two full boulders have been done by the entire team, but remember, boulder number three has only been done by half, so remember that. Mechdi leading the way, though, with 60. High scoring round so far, could get even higher. Sam Avazu and Yannick Floe are our top three. Down at the bottom is Adam Ondra, but he hasn't climbed that third boulder yet. Same with Toby and Alberto. So all to play for still. Two French athletes at the top of the table, which is going to please this crowd. And we're seconds away. So we are going to have a little pause in proceedings here while people reset. So, Shauna, so far, I mean, obviously, this, uh, this performance by uh, Sam, uh, very impressive. Yeah, and I feel like we all need that break now as the crowd. Sam is one that I've mentioned every time people have asked about who's who's getting that ticket tonight i think sam's definitely been in contention from the get-go like we've said earlier but you can't count alberto out you know he's he's an olympic gold medalist and it's suddenly seeming all to play for after the semi-finals round it looked like toby could walk in and own this entire competition but not getting that 25 on the first boulder could have hurt him a little bit we are yet to see um yeah, it's, it's always impossible to call. It really is, yeah. So Toby struggling, pulled it back. 
And we have a couple more boulders to go. And we can see them there. It's a good shot to show you the different stars available. We know them all apart from boulder number four, which starts on the zero degrees bit of slab on the right and then crosses over to the left. It's a big jumps in there and some pressy moves. Yeah, it's the coordination boulder. It's the, the funky boulder of the round. We are yet to see that. We've got a few climbers left to go on boulder three and we are yet to see boulder four. It feels like we've got quite a long way to go, but it always seems to go very quickly from this point onwards. It does. And do remember, you can go back and watch all of the broadcasts from the last couple of days on the IFSC YouTube channel. Go and have a look at the social media side of things as well. The IFSC Instagram is great. You can get all the pictures. And uh, if you haven't seen Oriane in some Olympic sunglasses, well, you know, that's why you need to head over and check that out. I uh, saw her early <laughs> having pictures on that. Right, Sam Abazu is in the tunnel. We can see him in that arch. And Nikolai's waiting as well. Sam has been standing there for a long time. Yeah, he sure has. And, you know, if a French athlete qualifies here today, that will mean that Manu Kornu gets to go to the Olympic qualifier series. If a French athlete does not qualify, Manu is not selected for that event. <laughs> so, yeah, when I said earlier that it's kind of impacts everyone else, Orien winning this morning, oh, this morning, was that this afternoon? Um, that means that Zilia Avazu gets to go and fight for her Olympic ticket. So, yeah, there's, there's so much going on here. And the athletes, they, they want to get that ticket here because that really changes their setup towards the games next year. It takes all the pressure off and allows them to really shape their year as they want to heading towards the games as opposed to qualify it through the Olympic qualifier series. Exactly. All right, well, we are underway again. We just saw Boulder Fort, which has some coordination style jumps in it, a paddle move at the top. But Sam Avazu, let's see if that break has affected him. He's really done well so far and will want a quick send of this. Meanwhile, Nikolai has a last boulder, his last four minutes on the boulder pad this year, on the boulder mat this year. It's quite crazy when you put it like that. The, it's the last four minutes on the boulder mat at an IFSC event yeah. this year. Mad, isn't it? <laughs> Sam easily in, holds it with one hand, gets set, and at the moment, yeah, Sam is, is having a very good round. He is hit follow at the perfect time. He seems to have really ramped it up coming into this round and he looks quite dominant right now. Does, yeah. Oh, he's got one boulder to go and he'll have a nice long rest as well to get ready for it. Well, let's have a look at boulder four for the first time. Grey volumes you've got to stand on. Moving over to the left, pressing up and then finishing way over on the right, pretty much directly underneath where you start the thing. It's kind of three jumps in a row, but the jumps are different styles. So the first is quick feet. The second is a big stand up into the undercut. And then the third is kind of wild, riding it all the way to the end. However, we know that there's a few different methods getting up towards the tent. Great that Nicolas um, has stuck. Nikolai stuck that five there. I was holding my breath as he was setting up for the next move. And you know, you do the first coordination move, you get five points. You do the second, you don't get anything. That's you have to a good do the point, yeah. third. Yeah. So from the second, you should be able to reach up to the ten quite smoothly, but you need to you need to stick that hold in order to then reach up to the ten. So yeah, it's making them work for these final points in the boulder round. It's fascinating with the two zones, isn't it? It does change the way a boulder looks and feels. I know you got asked a question about whether this is going to be the format coming into normal World Cups, and uh, you said earlier, not yet, but I quite like it. I wouldn't mind. I quite like it. I do like the two zones. I like having multiple athletes on the wall. Ooh, that was close, and he knows it. Yeah, he almost got two hands underneath there. Nearly found the friction, but much closer from Nikolai with a minute and a half, which he's got time to go again. And look at Sam Avazu's score, though, 74.8. He is way out in front. With a boulder to go. Yeah. What a dream start from Sam. And Toby and Adam, a little bit of work to do later on when they get to this boulder number three, of course. That's coming up next for them. Nikolai, much better now. Easy into that first zone. 
stops this time, so that 10 should be within touch now. And now there's a few different methods. He wants to match in quite quickly. A foot pop is what stunted his progression there. The foot pop meant that he couldn't keep pulling through with his hands. That was an unfortunate little slip. Um, the time is ticking down, so I don't know if we will see him back up there. If he can hold it together, we might see him get another chance. But the top of this boulder, there's a few different methods leading towards that 25. You might see a climber stop and match on the 10. You might see a climber stop on the next hold, or we might see climbers only pulling through very quickly towards that 25. So they've got options. Let's see what Nikola can do. And he really needs another top in order to add to that score. Explodes off it. This boulder is the definition of new school comp climbing. <laughs> so one of your favourites then? Do you want to go out on that? <laughs> no, I'm good. You, all yours, Matt. No, you see, I'll I'm very old. One. I'm I'll take boulder one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, or maybe then. the slab as of late. <laughs> no, don't say that. Horrendous, horrendous decisions. <laughs> Yeah, Shauna got to try the boulders uh, for the women's semi-final. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think back now. Yeah, yeah. I was a bit jealous, actually. I didn't realise you were doing that. I saw you warming up. I kind of wanted to uh, grab my shoes, but I think you would have destroyed me out there. <laughs> this is Sam on the 25, and Nikolai rocking up and exploding in. That was the time he didn't get it. He did get it one time. Now, do remember that boulder number three, you know, it's it's not a, a given that the athletes are going to do this. So do keep an eye, everyone, on uh, Alberto on the left. And we've seen athletes, they've, they've dropped it maybe once or twice, and that's definitely impacting their points. 0.1 point is lost per attempt, so that's why the scores have decimal points next to them. Mejdi making quick work of boulder four currently, and we see him now reaching up towards that 10. What method will he opt for on this final sequence? I think, I think a, foot, a foot pop there again just yeah. stunted his progression up high, but he's got a lot of time left on the clock and he seemed very comfortable. Alberto pulling back on, meaning he must have had a slip or a fall. So we'll see him on this final section. I think he'll make some adjustments and do this boulder with relative ease, I would imagine, on this attempt. Yeah, he barn doored off the first time. He didn't the second, and he gets the top. Good work from Alberto. Did what he needed to do and get those 25 points and move on. And Mejdi is going once more. His fall before was almost identical to what Nikolai did, as you said, with that foot pop. So let's see if he's changed it. Not Losing that time. a little focus there, changing his movement patterns. Sometimes it can be difficult to repeat boulders like this. I think Mejdi will see him back up on the top of this boulder, but he does need to kind of stop, reflect, and make sure his focus doesn't falter throughout this first section, even though his mind will be on the upper section. I don't know if you can hear at home, but when uh, Mejdi paused there, the whole stadium just went completely silent. I was looking around to try to work out what had happened. There's a lot of focus. I'm trying I'm to get... And now there's a chant going. <laughs> All right, Mejdi goes again. A bit of a hesitation that time. Oh, just holds the five. Some of the fastest feet I've ever seen. Does drive through, doesn't he? Holds it this time with a pinch. Holding it with his thumbs. His fingers are on no texture whatsoever. Very impressive for Mejdi. Can he make this last section work? Oh, an unfortunate foot slip again. A very minor foot slip, but it's making a huge difference on how much momentum he's carrying through into this next section. Mejdi looks like he's definitely trying to stop on that second to last hold. We've heard that that can work, but it's not necessarily the easiest method. If they are able to continue the momentum, not stop there, keep pulling through and hit that 25, it's more likely that they'll stay on the wall because the 25 is a better hold. It's got it's got more positive edge. I don't want to call it a jug because it, <laughs> it, it doesn't really look like a jug, but it's more positive than the one before it. All right, let's see what Mejdi could do with a minute 10 on the clock. He's down with 69.6. That's his score. Two high zones, two tops. I'd like another one. I haven't seen Mejdi reach the top of a lead wall in a while, so he needs to stack up as many points in this boulder round. And he wants the crowd behind him, and of course they respond. It's, it's Sean, it seems like they've grown seats out there. I swear there's more people in the stadium. <laughs> Really feel like it. All right, here he goes again, up to the top, holds it with the thumbs. 
and I expect this will be his last attempt as that clock starts to tick down. Hopefully no foot pop this time and he can get a real good go at this last section. But another foot slip. There it goes again. He saw it. Throw him off. The clock is ticking down. He doesn't want to leave, but he shakes his head. All right, so that's mentally done. That's his, comp his bold around. Not done, done. He's got a lead route to go. Well, yes. Well, I said bold around. So he's done on the boulder. And now he gets to uh, put a harness on. Okay. So Adam Andre is waiting. Let's see Alberto. He hit this second time. Love that swing. It's a real hero move, isn't it? I know it's a jug, but it must feel amazing holding that move. Yeah, definitely. And we've seen all of the athletes, I'm pretty sure, go left hand over the top, which is what I was expecting. But the root setters thought we might see athletes go right hand. Um, no athletes struggling too much with that last move, but this fourth boulder, yeah, we're yet to see much progress on the, the upper section. All right, Adam runs over to the left. Yannick will take on the jump. Adam's had his hands buried in that chalk bag since observation. He was carrying it around in observation, making sure his hands were, were dry. Adam talks a lot about his fingertip skin and he's got a lot of tactics on managing that. <laughs> we need a masterclass with the man who can teach us how. Oh, just, he nearly messed that up with a kick, but got it. Adam on his flash go, one move away. No! He lost the left foot. So we didn't quite see it on the screen. I, I just caught it looking at the wall. We might get a replay. What happened is his left foot kind of, it, it slipped as he was going into that movement. So a, a surprising fall from Adam there. Yannick on the screen right now, he was trying to stand up into that pinch like Medjdi. His hips weren't high enough for him to get the weight through his foot to make that work. In order to do the movement the same way Medjdi did it, and if you're coming into the undercut also, you need to stand super high on the left foot, so the highest grade volume you can see here, and make sure your hips are perfectly above your feet. Yeah, and he's starting this kick now. Up he goes, running beautifully across that slab to nail the underclink. And a really quick adjustment from yeah. Yannick there, not spending much time on the ground at all. That's oh, good work, right, he's got the 10, hits it now much better and close. No foot slip, very close, he reached over the top, the intended method is to go right hand again, so not going left hand over the top. Yannick, he was able to make a huge adjustment on the midsection, can he do that for the top section? All right, Adam will pull on again as well. I loved how he hit the wall. He knew even when he got the left hand on, he was falling there. Tried to slap it maybe to save himself, but he needs to make this adjustment quickly. He's got to send this boulder. Yeah, I think it was just a mistake from Adam. I don't think it's out of... Oh, wow, wow, I was going to say, I don't think it's, it's out of reach for him. Um, but yeah, I was proven wrong as I was speaking. So. I wonder if Adam will see the, the right hand again method. It looks like he just doesn't feel comfortable in that position as he's throwing over. And maybe it is his skin playing a factor in pulling on that right hand. Meanwhile, Yannick setting up really good for him to be able to execute that move perfectly again. Will we see him get this 25, the first person to be able to do so? Oh, that was so very close. <laughs> of course, he won't know how close that is as well, but he is oh, inches away. Adam is pulling on once more. And when I say he won't know it's close compared to the other athletes is what I meant. I wonder if Adam's just pure like sort of height and mass is pulling him away from the wall. He's a lot taller, but no, look, different method. Just didn't faff around with the jump that time. He didn't faff around the jump. Adam's one to, to make heel hooks work. Um, where others wouldn't even question putting them on. The others, they didn't need that heel hook. A surprise that Adam couldn't make that big flick over work, but good that he was able to figure out his own way. And on these climbs, the athletes can do whatever method they deem possible for them through this section. Yannick climbing really smooth on that first move. Can he make the second move work? He does. I would love to see Yannick stick this because he's climbing really fluidly through this bottom section. Yeah, you feel he deserves it, not that time. Yeah, he might. He's, again and again, he's opting to go left hand over the top. I don't know if that's even possible. It would be really interesting to know if the route setters tried to make it work. Oh, he had 25 points in his hand and it just slipped away. And that is the boulder round over for Yannick. A lot ticking through his head there as he walked off stage. Okay, well, we're on our final climb up on uh, boulder number three. 
Let's see this from Adam. That was a failed attempt. Wasn't enjoying the launch. Tried it differently when he got it. Yannick close, but no. And then Adam with a high heel. A much better method for him. So, no send for Yannick. It's a shame because he kind of deserved that. But Toby is on now. And as is Philip on that last climb. Yeah, Toby, our final climber on Boulder 3. The DJ starting to wrap things up a little bit and the crowd wanting a show here tonight. Tonight, this afternoon, it feels it, like tonight. It really does feel like tonight, you're right. Right, Toby goes up. Oh, how did he save that? Only just saving that. Big moment for Toby, right. One last launch, he goes for the Adam-esque heel, then thinks better of it. It's a long way for him, he's not as tall. Okay, well, he made it work. <laughs> What's interesting is he did not see Adam do that. No. They're the only two climbers to use a heel, and it almost feels like Toby just watched Adam and got some beta from him. There was no possible way that Toby could have seen what Adam did, so really fascinating that they went for the same method. Yeah, and, and how differently they did it when they get the method in. You know, Adam mm -hmm. a bit taller could reach easier. Toby had to scoot his way up a bit higher. Okay, so we, that's it for Boulder 3. So we just stick with Boulder 4 now. Philip on it and 4 to go after him. You can see there, a good shot of the clock. That's what the athletes are looking at. Often you'll see it on your camera when they're sort of staring. <laughs> it looks like straight at us watching, but they actually have their eyes on the clock. Right, here goes Philip, kicks back. I find the power of the clock very interesting as that minute buzzer goes. So they get a, a beep at one minute and then as the five seconds hits and it starts to, to beep down through those last five seconds, you see it really play with the <laughs> athletes. Um, I've been in that position with myself many, many times previously. And yeah, the clock the clock has a lot of power. It does. I, I have those beeps in my dreams, put it like that. I can hear them. <laughs> Sort of iconic with climbing, those sounds. All right, here goes Philip. Huge, he generates such a big swing with that leg. He needs to because it's a very long distance to make. What he also needs to do is to generate with that leg and then throw his hips into the wall. I know I talk a lot about hips, but if he doesn't get his hips up and over that foot, his hips will be sticking out and therefore he will be falling off like it's happening right now. So a good kick from him. Let's see if he can get it again. Brought that right leg in to kick against the volume to stop him. And here goes this big swing Shauna was talking about. Yeah, so hips in that time, but a little bit too far to the right and not quite high enough. Um, if I could draw a dot on the wall, I would and show you exactly where they need to be. <laughs> we need after comp analysis with Shauna. It feels like a feature, this one. A big screen, you can draw all over it, it'd be great. I'd love that. I would love that, yeah, we should do that. I'm such a geek when it comes to climbing movement. <laughs> Well, as we've heard, Sean, a lot of people uh, use you as their coach nowadays. Uh, <laughs> they just, your words of wisdom. Yeah. All right, Philip has less than a minute, 57 seconds. He's down on the leaderboard at the moment, down right at the bottom with a 44. And we know from previous rounds that that is going to cause him problems. He needs to get a 25 here. Oh, he almost saved that with pure thumb strength because his body wasn't in a great position. It was, it looked possible for him to save it. But yeah, if he can get a bit higher with his hips and get a bit more weight through his foot, it'll make it a lot easier for him to stay on the wall. But that clock is ticking down and he doesn't have many, many seconds left. No, he doesn't. This is going to be it for him. This that time he gets so it. So much better. All right, well, he finally made the adjustment, but this is his last attempt at this. One go, Philip. Oh, he's trying a high toe. That's, well, it's working. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was really, really impressive. He got that high toe in, allowing him to bring two hands into the ten. You have to wonder if he had more time, would that have worked? It really looked like he could make it work, yeah. but it's unfortunate we won't get to see him on that. But what was impressive there was that he kept his calm, he was collected, and he was able to get that 10 points with just a few seconds left to go. Yeah, and thinking outside the box as well. I never would have seen that high toe hook, so good work. And this was Toby. He got it done, Fashko. Uh, I think you've had it quite simple, that one. So job done. No skin lost, hopefully. 
This is uh, Philip creating some Halloween-like green smoke there as he uh, cleans the chalk off his hands. That was close. And you can see that clock, three seconds to go. Okay, leaderboard as things stand. Remember, a couple of athletes to go on the final boulder, but Sam Avazu is leading the way. And Sam Avazu will be out next, so he can add to that score in a minute. Mejdi Schalk, his teammate in second. Toby Roberts, third. And Mejdi Schalk is done, so he can't add to his score, but Sam and Toby can. Yeah, it's pretty crazy when someone's leading the leaderboard with a boulder to go. Yes. Shows they're in form, I think. Philip Schenk, though, down at the bottom, 49.1. Sam Abazu got announced. The flags, I wish you guys could see the flags at home. There are so many of them in the stadium. It's, it's too dark for us to show you a shot of them, but the passion this crowd is showing is really good to see. It really is. It's the DJ, the MC, <laughs> the crowd. They're piling the pressure on Sam right now. It's a good last event of the season, isn't it, for the Europeans? And I think he's here for it. I think he is too. I think he's turned up today. So Sam runs in. Look at this straight away. Wow, that was a great execution. This guy means business. This is where Philip had the crazy toe. Sam. Another foot slip. About, is it a foot slip? Because we see suddenly the, a sudden speed up in terms yeah. of the hands. So they, they do want to go fast, but each of the athletes, they're left, they're swapping feet and then they're, they're trying to generate by, by flicking their hips, using their leg a little bit. But all the athletes we've seen on that top movement have lost their foot. So before they're ready, that foot slips and then they're throwing their arms kind of just to see if they can make it work. They're not able to kind of set up in the way that they want to. I think that foothold is dual texture. And I think it's as they, they go to set up, as they bring their foot, the right foot back is when they lose the left foot. So they're kind of just going anyway. But we've not yet seen an, an athlete other than Yannick, I think, actually. He's, his foot wasn't slipping, but, but yeah, the other athletes, their foot has, has slipped. But Phillips' way with the toe hook, I think if Sam sees that, I think that would really work for him, but there's no guarantee that he, he sees it. We don't know if Philip read that from the ground. Also, the athletes, they read these boulders together, but they don't have to share everything that they see. So, so maybe Philip saw it and he didn't say. Maybe he just instinctively did that on the wall. Um, there's no guarantee that Sam even has that in his mind as an option. No, exactly. For me, I, I feel like it was instinct. He had so at the time, he didn't have time to think about it. But we'll see. Up he goes, easy into that hold. So good to see. Looks like a different boulder. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? All right, Sam gets that left foot on. Watch for the slip. It happened again. <sighs> so, big moments here. <laughs> Apologies, I had to sigh so loud then, didn't I? Into my <laughs> mic. <laughs> I'm mean, getting a bit too relaxed. I know. <laughs> I, I, I'm less stressed than that sounded. It's just, uh, it's, it's really <laughs> intense <laughs> to watch this. And I hope that comes across because it just, it's hard not to feel emotionally connected to what you're watching. Well, I certainly do. You're not saying you don't want to be here. I oh, can tell. Oh, gosh, no. I want to be here more than anything. <laughs> All right, Sam is having a little chat with the umpire. I think he just told him to get back on the mat, basically. He was standing the on the... Uh, what the the umpire is cricket, obviously. <laughs> What's happened to Matt? <laughs> Someone get Matt Groom a coffee. I, it's because I want to be a cricket commentator. That's what's happening. I'm making my play oh, for another no. job, you see. <laughs> I mean, I say, oh, no, I don't hate cricket that much. But, um, yeah, I'd way rather be here right now. You're going to get cricket is... hate now, Sean, and there's going to be people <laughs> sending you messages. Right, Sam gets a huge cheer from the crowd as 45 seconds comes up. Oh, he's grabbing the brush. Very casual for Sam. I think he's just going for a one and done here. Yeah, um, quite a, a strong play to take a moment to brush there with very little time on the clock. He's not leaving any time for error on these start moves. Um, not that we've seen him falter on them previously. No, well, it paid off luckily, 24 seconds to go. Hits the 10. Let's see. Come on, Sam. I'd love to see this. No. Another foot slip. Very, very minor. But, yeah, it would have been great to see Sam piece it all together in that bold round. But he has done a lot of work and got some great points on the board. And, you know, he's still in first place right now as it stands. Of course, we've got two athletes still. Three athletes still. <laughs> I'm already getting uh, abuse from the umpire, <laughs> by the way, from various people. 
No, three. Sam, <laughs> yeah, three. Yeah, three's gone. So it's Sam Rembert will still be leading the way, depending on what happens to these athletes. Let's see. Alberto runs on. Alberto takes a sec to check this out. Remember, we'll only have one athlete at the time. This is the last boulder we'll see here this afternoon. Alberto tried to bring that right foot to kick, but didn't quite get it right that time. And just showing Sam's kind of dominance on those first two moves. Yes, he didn't get the 25, but he cruised through this section, and Alberto making a big adjustment there. That was really, really good from him. What do you call that kind of kick? Is there a word for it? Uh, hop. Oh, I like it. That'll do. I don't know. Hop kick. <laughs> he's kind of he's hopping across at the first and saving it with the the back step. Yeah, is that he? what it is? the back step? I think is the one I wanted okay, to say. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, was, I didn't, wasn't sure which yes. which kick we were talking yes, about. Yes, it's true. There. There's a few in there. Yeah, back step. Okay, thank you, Shauna. <laughs> there, step. that. One. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so Alberto gets set again. Has that left foot up on the grey volume. We made this look good before. Goes for the flick. Up he comes. Left foot kicking on the wall. He looked down at his left hand and I was curious to see whether he would try the, the toe hook. He didn't, um, but he did look down at the left hand, so I wonder if that, that might be in his mind for another attempt. There was no foot slip that time, but he still didn't get the distance across. No, no foot slip, but also no power coming from that leg. He, he was travelling sideways but he didn't get any upwards movement he didn't get any push from that like that foothold is terrible hence why there's been his foot slips so yeah he needs to he needs to really get more from his lower body here whether it is with the toe hook whether it is with a big push from the leg but there needs to be some power coming from somewhere let's see if he can generate and find that with half his time gone Sam Avazu an 84.8 leading the way at the moment. Alberto will catch right up to him, though, if he can get this done. So important, these last couple of climbs. It's the back kick. Just missed the feet that time. Yeah, he, did, he didn't hit the higher foothold, therefore that's why he... he seemed to slip off but yeah there was no way he was going to be able to put any weight through the undercut that he's throwing up to without without those feet on yeah, he'll go again 129 on the clock looking better and better every time he does that move two hands in solid from alberto He's a bit far away at the moment. And a little giggle um, came across Alberto's face there, often quite composed and doesn't doesn't let you see much of what's going on. Um, but I'm not sure he knows how to do this top move. Or yeah, some, sometimes you're so far away from it, you just kind of got to laugh. It? It's not yeah, like I he's close. That is exactly what is happening. <laughs> Thanks for putting that into words. <laughs> All right, he goes again. 38 seconds, not long to go now for Alberto. And he's to somehow figure something out. I just, I, you get the feeling he's up here and then he sort of still doesn't quite know what to do. You have to wonder if he saw the toe hook that Philip found, would that stand him in better stead? Would Sam have been able to make it work? Really cool to see Philip trying something that is outside the box. I, I'm, I'm curious to know whether the root setters even thought about that. I'll have to have a word in the break. We'll see if we can find out for you. <laughs> All right, so two to go. Adam Ondra is waiting. You can just see his left, right arm there, hanging out in the arch. Let's see Alberto again. That was the kick to stop the barn door and the swing. Up underneath, thumbs in play, sliding down that no-tech surface. You see those Olympic rings there on his arm. Hits, but just didn't seem to know what to do at the top. So, Adam would like to add more points here. Has a look at the wall, but quickly gets involved. He knows the basics of these movements. Sets himself up, pops to the five. Easy first move for him, well done. 
And with Sam not doing this final boulder, it suddenly kind of opens it up for both Adam and Toby to kind of get up there in those high points alongside Sam. Yeah, it's set things quite nicely for the last two climbers, actually, in terms of tension for us. And Sam would have been way out in front if he had got that. He sure would. All right, Adam <laughs> bangs his hands against those shorts, trying to get off a bit of excess chalk. Goes again, not as good as the first time. Not looking that comfortable here. Adam can sometimes take a little while to warm up on boulders like this. Um, and we do see him complete them. So it's not a case of he's not able to do them, but I'd say it's not his, his preferred style. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, here we go again. He's trying to get something with that left foot. There's nothing really to be had. Comes over. Hey, he's giving that nod that you love to see. <laughs> Yeah, so when, when Matt said that, <laughs> I love it when you see an athlete nod and it just gives a little insight into what's going on in their mind because, of course, the, you get to see what they do on the wall, but we also get the privilege of seeing how the athletes deal with everything that's going on. Yes, we talk about pressure, but what we talk about quite little is the problem-solving element of bouldering. They're doing that on the mat in front of your eyes, and they don't often give that much away. I think you can see quite a lot from whether they're smiling, whether they're frowning, but I love it when you get a nod, because it usually means that an athlete has figured it out, they've pieced the puzzle together, and usually do something quite cool on their next go, so we'll see if Adam's nod was in vain or not. Yeah, we'll find out in a second or two. Up he comes underneath, those thumbs pressing, yeah. All right, now, oh, he goes for the toe, brilliant. Ooh. I just, it's really cool. I just can't see how it's going to work. I can. So I think with that toe hook, if he's able to bring two hands into the ten, so he'll get the toe hook in, he'll bring both hands into the ten, and then I think someone like Adam, they can just go straight potentially to the 25, or they'll be able to be in a position, because their hands are further right, they'll be able to pull their hips slightly further, they've got less distance to travel. That toe hook could really unlock this climb. So you think he'd keep the toe all the way to the end, or when does he release it? No, so he puts the toe in, and that what the toe allows him to do is bring two hands into the tent. Okay. So that toe is there, and then the last movement will be similar, either right, right again, right, left over. I don't think that'll work like Yannick was trying. Or both hands on the 10, and then left hand, right hand straight to the 25. Okay, well, Shauna believes, and if Shauna believes, I believe. So uh, I'm now fully behind the toe hook. <laughs> the Let's toe hook. The it. toe hook could unlock this. And I think it'll create a different style of climb to what the route set has intended. But I'm confident the toe hook works if Adam can get back up there. Okay, well, I can't wait to see if he even does it again. Maybe he thinks it wasn't working. We'll find out. He needs to get there first, of course. So here we go. And we are going to get to see what he does. And he is going to do the... No, oh, is he? He is a knee currently bar? doing a... What was that? That was a knee bar. So he was on the jib and he had a knee pressed up it, into the undercut. Does it, it, it count as a knee bar if you do it against your own leg? I've no idea. I've no idea. It didn't work anyway, but it was awesome. <laughs> Adam leaves the stage. What? And he's, he's psyched about that. Yeah. Yeah, he's walking away with 68.9. So he's currently in fourth spot. Of course, the rankings are less relevant. We've still got Toby to come out, who's below Adam currently. So Toby can, can definitely bump Adam down in terms of rankings. But the points are really close. Alberto, Mejdi, and Adam all within a point of each other currently as it stands. So it's... Uh, it's making things really, really quite exciting as we head into the lead route after Toby, of course. Look at that. A knee bar stack. Knee bar stack, yeah. I'm going with that. And if, <laughs> if anyone was going to do that on those mats, it was going to be Adam Andra. <laughs> I just love it. It's such an outrageous thing to try to do on a <laughs> boulder problem for an Olympic qualification, but brilliant. Like, why not try it? If it he is outrageous, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he uh, is a bit. <laughs> he does some crazy things. Right, Toby Roberts, last climber out, boulder number four. A little slip to start is, yeah, now pressing in into the five. Toby, he's gone away and worked on this sort of style. I, I've said that about a few different things, and Toby's had so much success in competition climbing, but he's also had his weaknesses exposed in Bern at the World Championships, and he's gone away and worked on it. And you can still almost see him learning every now and then on climbs like this, and you can see here maybe... So he's trying to do it statically. Whether he's read that or not, I'm not sure. It's obviously a very dynamic move. Can he make it work? He can. Wow, well, we talked about changing styles. We've just seen it. 
Impressive from Toby. Really impressive and, and creative yeah. as well. Let's see what he does here then. Maybe he's going to do something. Maybe it's the double stack for Toby too. I think he's going to try it traditionally, first of all. He does with that left foot. Not bad. <laughs> he's got his head in his hands there, kind of looking like... I mean, he spilled his chocolate I over the mat and he's, he's scooping his up. <laughs> it's not that the head, to, the hand to the head, as he, he kind of let a little bit of emotion out, that was suggesting he's he's almost like decided he's done it wrong and he's going to figure it out on the next go. I kind of I kind of like that, and he's got a little cheeky smile there as well. <laughs> well, maybe he's just uh, hasn't got a chalk sponsor and he just lost half his chalk. We'll never know. <laughs> but he is. Uh, yeah, he's resting here, he's cleaning off his shoes, obviously having knocked that chalk. He doesn't want to then get chalk on his feet and stand on it. And so interestingly, that has bumped him up to second spot. However, he does have 69.8 with Alberto 69.7, Mejdi 69.6, Adam 68.9. They are all very much within a point or so of each other. So Toby getting the 25 on this will have a massive yeah. boost, leaving him less to do on the lead wall if he wants to take that ticket, which, come on, who doesn't? Exactly, of course he does. And Sam Avazu at, at the moment, oh. I mean, it's static, but it's still powerful, isn't it? I would it? love to know if Toby thought, that's the way to do that move, or I know that that's supposed to be a jump and I'm not going to do it. It's got to be the latter, because everyone else would have been talking about the jump. Right, he gets set, here we go. Oh, try going all the way. All the way, and I think if we're going to see him do it, that'll be the way, because when he first tried it, he hit the second to last hole and tried to bump again, and he, he wasn't very close, and I think as we saw him hit the mat and his head came up to his hands, he was thinking, okay, I need to go all the way for that. And I do think we'll see him try that method again, because he wasn't too far off. I do think he needs to get a little bit more height um, if he's going to stick it, and whether that comes from his leg power or his arms, I'm not sure. But, yeah, he needs to get a bit more height. However, the minute buzzer just went. He has to get back up there first. Yeah, time has disappeared on this boulder. I can't believe it's gone so fast. Oh, last minute of our boulder round here. <laughs> DJ building things up, the crowd responding, they're clapping. Toby pulls back on. DJ building things up. Toby just asked for the crowd support. <laughs> Everyone is building it up in here right now. Come on, Toby, let's see what you can do here. He's, oh, no, he slips, he's gonna have to pull on quick. Doesn't chalk back up, interestingly, so he's straight back on, no hesitation, focus. So wild that he does this. There was no chalk from anyone else where his palm is now, so. <sighs> but he holds it once more, drops into the undercling, so here we go, 10 seconds. Last chance for Toby to upgrade his score. Hits the match. I think he was rushing a bit. Woo. Well, we know now what the scores are going to be. We'll wait for confirmation, of course. And remember, there might be appeals that come through. I haven't got any messages about appeals, so I don't think so. But just uh, put that Sam as a caveat. Sam Avazu, 15 points ahead That's of the massive. pack. That is massive. Yeah. Well, this was Toby. He came close. Moving his way across, he tried a couple of different methods, but not enough to change his score. And we are just waiting for this final leaderboard, and then we will say goodbye. So, Sam Avazu leading the way, 84.8, followed by Toby Roberts, just under the 70s. Alberto Hines Lopez is in touch, as is Mejdi Shark and Adam Ondra, as you said, all so close together. Then Yannick Floe, Nikolai Uznik, and Philip Schenk with some work to do on that lead wall. And that's coming up in about half an hour. And Shauna, we've almost finished this marathon <laughs> uh, day, but one more round to go for us. So Sam Abazu leading the way on that 84.8. The athletes have very kindly set this up to be one of the most exciting moments in competition climbing this year because the points are so, so close together. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's going to be a nail biter. So join us in about 30 minutes. Thank you so much, Shauna. And we will see you soon for that lead route to find out who our next Olympian will be. See you soon.
Chloé. Malheureusement, il n'a pas compris ce moment de relancer. Il a tout le temps essayé de croiser main gauche dans la, dans la 25, mais s'il retapait main droite, il avait l'air d'être dans le bon timing pour pouvoir euh, saisir cette dernière. Bon, par contre, on vous promet qu'on demandera quand même aux ouvreurs quelle était réellement la méthode que eux ils auraient imaginée, même si de toute façon, chaque grimpeur a, a sa méthode, hein, ça dépend de, du potentiel. Oui, si vous avez la vidéo, on peut la mettre sur les réseaux sociaux, s'il vous plaît, une fois que c'est fini. En tout cas, merci à, à la madame d'être intéressée par... Euh,
On est sur l'âme dans 2025, on va, on va accueillir les hommes pour l'observation de la voix. Donc euh, nous avons encore le temps de prendre un, un café, de vous restaurer. Et ensuite on vous demandera de rejoindre vos places. On est sur le, la dernière ligne droite de ce tournoi qualificatif olympique. Dans à peu près 40 minutes, on connaîtra le garçon sélectionné pour les JO. Et bien alors, comme on disait, hein, autant on peut dire pas mal de choses sur le bloc, autant on va les laisser tranquilles rentrer dans la voie de difficulté. Il n'y a qu'un seul essai, ils vont être à fleur de peau, la place est importante. Et l'aventure aussi, seulement 20 grimpeurs seront aux Jeux Olympiques de Paris pour le combiné et 14 grimpeurs pour la vitesse. Welcome back everyone to Laval. It's time for the second half of this men's qualifier. It's the lead and as you can see the athletes are running across the stage to observe this frankly enormous lead route that they've got in front of them. Shauna, if the women's was fairly short, the men's just seems to go on forever. Yeah, it's a pretty monstrous route that they've got ahead of them on a wall that isn't as high as we've seen at other events. But this route kind of weaves around. There's a lot going on. It's kind of a route of multiple different sections, multiple different styles. And the setters, they really wanted to give these climbers an opportunity to really showcase their best lead climbing. So, yeah, it's going to be really really mental I think just really wild yes it is there's a long time for the athletes to have to control those emotions but a lot of people in contention Sam Avazu and we will show you the scoreboard in a sec but Sam Avazu out in front at the moment a bit of a surprise but 15 points ahead of his nearest rival and of course though we have some really good lead climbers in this bunch I mean everyone of course is uh, is quality but when we look at people like Adam and Toby and Alberto there are some real specialists out there so a lot to play for and no clear winner as of yet no, we have Sam who is kind of out ahead right now. He's 15 points above second position. However, we've just you just mentioned that about lead climbing specialism and it's something we talk about a lot and it's does seemingly become less and less relevant but every now and then it does tend to really show in this format and this to me looks like a lead climbers lead route yes I, I would agree with you and just to let you know what's going on there on your shot the uh, we saw a judge shining something up at the wall that is because one of the clip drawers isn't clipped so they're just showing the athletes where that is because that's uh, not something we usually see now Toby has binoculars out and of course Sean that's what they're allowed to do what exactly are they looking for up there when they get those binoculars out <laughs> they're just trying to get as much information as they possibly can in this observation period they get six minutes to observe the route they'll then look at the sequence they'll plan where to clip from and just gain as much beta so as much information as they can and plan their way through that will stand them in good stead for when they get to a, a position on the wall maybe if they are unsure they'll be able to have different ideas in their mind about how they might approach a different section it's 
interesting we just got a good look at the top of the root there and you can see there's a hold on top of the blue which I'm not sure if they'll be able to see from down there there's a big blue ball which I keep calling a space ball and I think that is incorrect <laughs> but I quite like space ball um, so yeah there's a little jib so a little extra addition on top of that up there okay so that's what they're checking out you can see Yannick talking to Alberto Inez Lopez down there the athletes of course sharing beta they're trying to figure this out together and they're all very clumped, which is quite nice to see. Sometimes they separate into little individuals, but everyone talking there. And interestingly, we've been taught through this route by the route setter. And in front of me right now, I have the route map, which tells me which sequence the holds go in. The climbers, they don't get to see the route map, so they don't know what the intended beta is. They don't get to see anyone try this climb. They're in isolation, and they get just one attempt with the 100 points available at the top of the wall. Also, with this climb, they have to get to the third green hold. So at the, well, there's three green holds at the bottom and then the second second set um, in order to just start gaining points because those first few moves, they don't get anything for them. No, exactly. And although we're not expecting any falls down there, it is, uh, it's a bit nervy for the athletes. So you can see the words on screen, no foot section through the middle. You could campus around on fairly good holds. There are feet maybe available. And then resistance, as the root setters have called it, up towards the blue section. And then this top, I, I don't think I've ever seen a kind of a move like this. And I really hope that someone gets there so, they could, so we can see it. Yeah, so it's a kind of a classic pogo boulder boulder style move for the finish and you know we see this every now and then in lead climbing and it is very showy it's going to be really cool if we do get to see someone up there and the root setters are very much hoping so they've actually dialed down the grade and the difficulty of this route because they want the climbers to be getting nice and high however we know that it really kicks in around the midsection there's some campusy moves that will just be zapping them they're, they're quite secure holds but the moves aren't necessarily super easy and then you really get into the to the meat of the route it gets really physical and quite awkward to find the good positions for the body so we'll see climbers kind of moving the hips around moving their body around maybe adjusting their hands quite a lot through the higher red and higher blue sections yes yeah, so that is what is to come the athletes have one minute 16 left in this observation period they'll then leave the stage they will have a couple of seconds of break and then our first athlete Nikolai Uznik will enter the stage and do remember that this competition is the final event for a lot of these athletes, this European qualifier, before we move on to Jakarta in about a week for the Asian qualifier and then South Africa and Oceania after that. And these Olympic tickets are going quickly. And look at those two French athletes down there. And Sean, <laughs> I mean, we've been chatting about atmosphere. This crowd are incredible. And of course, being a French crowd, they are right behind their athletes. They really are. And we have to talk about the fact that Sam, he just looked on a different level in the boulders. He didn't finish the last climb, but no one did. So he he just climbed all the boulders with a confidence. I, I've not seen Sam really take that on and take it through an entire round before. And if he can carry that into the lead route, he's going to be really hard to beat. Yeah, he's suddenly a contender, isn't he? I mean, I had him kind of circled in my head before we started, but I didn't think he'd do that. So a big statement from Sam Abazou. We saw Adam be very dominant through the qualification round. Toby very dominant through the semi-finals round of this event. And then suddenly Sam's kind of stepped up. And when we speak about who's in contention, of course, those athletes that I've named. But then you, you can't forget that Alberto, he's in there as well. He's, he's an Olympic gold medalist. You, you can never count him out. And, of course, the other athletes in there too, they'll be fighting for as many points as they can gain on this route. All right, well, time has been called. The athletes leave the stage. They're ushered out by one of our officials. And those uh, seats, those boxes you can see in the background, that's where the athletes will go after they've climbed because there's no more isolation. Once they're done, they're done, and they just get to nervously wait. And you get to wait at home as well. Who will be our next Olympic hopeful? One place, one gold medal, and this is what happened earlier. Nikolai Uznik, not the best round, but Mejdi Schalk, certainly in touch on those crimps and then Yannick Floe we thought he might cruise this boulder he didn't had to battle back a little bit but he's looking in form and then Philip Schenk as well and that man Shauna talked about him Sam Abazou the only one to top boulder number one beating his chest there in excitement as he walked off the stage and we just carried on after that and if Sam gets to hold 46 on this route he can't be beaten. Wow, okay. He can win it. 
on his climb. Wow. Regardless of what anyone else does. So um, 46 is rather high. So just to point out, hold 46 is the last hold on the red volume right at the top of the wall. So he needs to get set up going for that last move if he wants to secure his win. Of course, it depends what the other athletes do. If he doesn't get there, but if he wants to confirm that that is his ticket, yeah, hold 46 is. There we go, that's what he has in front of him. Well, final couple of moves here. This is boulder number three from earlier on. One of the easier ones, which made it important to do. A couple of moments along the way where the athletes dropped it, but generally pretty straightforward. But this move, I mean, we look at Adam here, he saved that with an instinctive left foot in and he knew how important that was. And there's Toby, of course, latching the top. Toby in touch as well. Yeah, I mean, there's very little between a lot of the athletes here with very, very few points between second, third, fourth, and fifth place. And the other's not that far behind as well. Of course, Sam does seem like he's out in front at the minute, but 15 points, that's just a few moves at the top of a lead route. Yeah. So. I say just a few moves <laughs> makes it sound simple. It surely isn't. <laughs> All right, well, we're watching the last couple of seconds of this. This is the final bowl of the athletes got to try. I flick back to Alberto, who uh, was looking good, dynamic. He actually didn't get this first time, got his second go, if I remember. Into that 10, getting the points, then launching up to the 25 for the maximum. Minus the attempt, 0 0.1 minus every time you fall off the wall. And Mejdi Schalk, Good round from him. Again, kept in touch, did what he needed to do. Could have maybe got a couple more tops or would have wanted them. And Adam Ondo with this crazy heel that he managed to find. And Toby actually uh, repeated it. He didn't see the moves, obviously. Worked it out for himself. Yannick Floe flying through the top. This was the boulder that no one managed to climb. Lots of people got to the second zone, but the top was impossible for all on the night. Philip Schenk gave it a good go, kept firing off down low. Sam Abazu looks solid once he had it. His coordination moves, easy to learn, but that last one's so difficult. Yeah, such fine margins for the root setters to try and get that right. It's unfortunate that we didn't see a top on that, but we saw a lot of climbing, which was great. We did, and that was a fall from Adam coming down. He seemed to be falling for so long. I, that I loved how his eyes were always on the clock as well as he went down. It was brilliant. Very efficient. Yes, exactly. Yeah, true. <laughs> Might as well just chalk up at the same time. Well, that's the score. Sam is out ahead, 84.8, but in touch is Toby Roberts in second place. Alberto Hines Lopez, Mejdi Schalk, and Adam Ondra. Then into the 50s, our final three. Yannick Floe, 54. Nikolai Uznik, 49. He'll be out first. And Philip as well in the 49. So a lot to do for them because that difference between 50 and uh, 85 is quite a lot. It is, but the difference between 69.8 and 68.9 is very little. And you can see what a great round in the boulders to have that separation, but also to have it so close. It's just really, really ramping this lead route up to be a true spectacle. Exactly. Now, for the women, we had Oriane climb last. Uh, Sam Avazu will climb kind of halfway through. But Nikolai will be out first, and we are very close to getting going here. Okay, the clock have all been reset on the screen. I can see it. Just making sure everything's ready to go, perfectly set up. And after this one, if you were expecting podiums for the women, we will do the podiums after this broadcast. So when Shauna does the interview with the winner, we will then go to podium mode. So do hang around for that. It's always nice to give support to the athletes who are getting those medals. It is, and I, I really love doing the interviews with the athletes too. I love hearing about what this means, what their preparation was like, and giving them a moment to really kind of let loose and just explain what this is all about for them as an individual because we kind of get a little insight into everything that they've done to get here when they're in that moment on the mat or on the lead wall but oh, it's a really really full-on moment for these athletes yeah so many emotions aren't there that we get to see Okay, Nikolai will be our first athlete out. We get to see this route through his eyes. And I'm actually quite nervous about this. <laughs> yeah, I've got butterflies too. <laughs> Weird, isn't it? 
<laughs> the amount, the amount of emotional connection you have to I this. I say it regularly, but watching gum climbing, I think it's harder than doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nikolai pulls off the ground. And remember, these first couple of holds are not scored, so no points available. Which does seem like a strange concept, but it's done deliberately because there's 100 points available and the system is kind of set. So depending on how long the route is, is how high up that first scoring opportunity is. It always seems quite mean when they put that number um, number one so high when the, the bottom moves are not, they're not rewarded for doing them. So Nicola underway now into those super holds matches. It, it's got a clip to come. Still no point, although there is the one in your screen now. This to me looks like really quite a big move, quite committing. We know that this section from the root setters, it's very much doable but tricky. So just starting to zap their forearms a little bit, maybe taking a little bit of tension and requiring their focus and to not lapse through that bottom section. But now he is gaining points. Yeah, so his score will start to get upgraded here. We'll see that in a sec. He gets that long, quick draw in, rests on the high heel. And the route really sort of switches on from this moment. Here we go, into the black pinches. The root setters explain here that the climbers really don't want to be over gripping. They want to stay as relaxed as they possibly can be because these holds, they are quite positive but the movements are hard and the angle that the holds are put onto the wall means that they create kind of tricky positions for the climbers to hold if they over grip they'll use far too much energy meaning that they're going to really struggle to get through that next section okay and another legend in the yeah. in the coaching pits down there Killian Fashuba with a fair number of gold medals world cup gold medals to his name I still find it strange when I see him coaching and not climbing you know I sort of double take when I look at him I find it strange when he walks through a crowd and people don't know who he is because yeah. I'm used to back when I started competing he was by far one of the most famous climbers <laughs> in the competition scene and yeah it's been really impressive to see what he's done with this team as well and the work that he's done with the athletes, really putting a lot of that experience to use and helping the current generation and next generations to come. Yeah, exactly. And his athlete right now is up there on the wall. This is the no feet section, but as you can see, there are a few feet available. Depends how you want to do it. But now look, their feet dangle in space as he drops down. Hard. I thought he might get a bit more of a reaction from the crowd there. I know, right? Oh, there we go. They're getting excited now. <laughs> Hi, oh, come on, guys. Oh, that's impressive. To be fair, they've had some lunch. They're just digesting <laughs> out there. They'll get excited soon. And he's the first of eight climbers. They're just ramping things up, maybe. Yeah, well, Nikolai is maybe halfway through now. He's as far left as this route goes. After this, it starts to track back slowly towards the right. But Nikolai falls going up. He what? got the 30. He was, At that point onwards, he was getting three points per hold. So really, really good to see him getting into the, the, the meat of this route. Unfortunately, not seeing him manage to turn that lip and get up onto that head wall. We know that Nikolai is more of a boulder specialist, potentially. So, yeah, maybe not too much of a surprise there, but a really, a really great effort from him. Yeah, good work from Nikolai. We'll wait for confirmation of where he's at in terms of points, but that's not going to be enough for that Olympic ticket. So, yeah, he, he doesn't jump into first position. He's currently in second with 79.5, so he, he, he for sure won't be getting that ticket tonight. But all good experience and learning, and he's in the finals of this competition, so very much one to be looking at as we head into the OQS next yeah. year. All right, well, we're resetting. Nikolai is getting that knot undone, and then he will leave over to that waiting area with some rather nice plants. I haven't noticed that before. <laughs> They've dressed the set beautifully there. All right, so the rope gets pulled through, and we get to go again. Next athlete will be Mejdi Schalk. And this crowd, you can only see a tiny bit of it, but they are just... It's just rammed in here, every single seat. I'm trying to see if I can see a free seat. I can't. Well, Mejdi comes on, the flags wave, the crowd cheer, and look at that stride from Mejdi. He means business. Yeah, he's 
definitely put himself in a position where he's in for a fight to try and get there. He's got he walked out of the boulder round with 69.6. Maybe not what he was looking for. We know Majdi can win boulder World Cups, but he's put some really impressive lead performances in at this competition in particular. So it still is all to play for. It is. Majdi has to do something special though here. And remember, the athletes haven't had that long in order to rest. They haven't had that long to rest since the ball around earlier, plus the semi-finals yesterday, qualifiers the day before. This is a very, very full-on, really hard event for these athletes to do. It's so much climbing. Yeah, it is, and especially at the end of a long season as well. I think they'll be happy for a break when this is done, but that will not be in their heads right now. All they've got to do is get this. Mejdi, we see the quick draw swinging, makes the clip. Reaches up to the one, and now Mejdi is scoring points. It's almost like the route sort of restarts here, doesn't it? Well, it, it does, feels basically, like it does yeah. It start here in some ways. And interestingly, Mejdi are opting to take a little rest there. So he's used a minute of his time up. That time and the clock that you can see in the bottom right corner is how long they have to do this route. With this route being quite a bit longer than routes we've seen in this event. We could potentially see someone time out. If that yeah. time runs out, that is when their score will, will be final. Regardless of if they keep climbing or not, they will be asked not to if they do, but they will not gain any more points. So time could very much be a factor on this route. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. And look at the score as well. And it's interesting to see how much a good boulder score counts. I mean, he's already in third, just with just nine points on the lead compared to Nikolai, who had to battle his way through the leaderboard. Gets a bit of a knee, that's clever. Yeah, I didn't see Nikolai try that. Maybe she's taking a lot of rest in this lower section. I really do think time's going to become a factor if he is able to make it up high onto this route. I think he might be gambling with this. I think perhaps he hasn't got the endurance to go all the way and he's thinking, look, I'm just going to make sure of the points. We'll have to see. He's got four minutes. But no feet section coming up. And there's a jib in that volcano that he hits perfectly. Yeah, those next holds that he's coming through here, we should see him move through with relative ease because the holds are very positive and he's such a strong athlete. He shouldn't struggle too much. And then I imagine he'll take a little rest because every positive hold he's got so far, he's been kind of having a little breather on. It's really as he heads through into this next section, when he hits the 30, that he's going to have to start fighting and battling, I think. Yeah, you are right. Look at the jib, you see it's kind of hidden, but he's making more points now, three for each hold from here onwards. And moves up into the lead, of course, so 99.6, 102 now, point six is total score. Mejdi throws. He's starting to really fight here, though, as he swings the legs down. I say that, actually, he's looking fairly composed, and this is a good resting point. It is a good resting point, and he's read this perfectly. He hasn't taken the rest, really. He doesn't look settled in that resting position, but he's managing to chalk and get a little bit of a shake. When they shake their arms, they're just trying to get some blood to go to their forearms and give them a little help with the pump that we'll be building. Great drop me there from him as he clips that, but you can see just how bad that pinch is. The move off that pinch is one of the hardest moves on this climb. Mejdi starting to really fight here, but he is high up on the wall. He is high, but he goes there just at the end of that section. But 123.6 is total score. My gut feeling is that that's not going to be enough, but we'll have to wait and see. He's got his hands on his hip. It does bump him into first position as it stands right now. So definitely, I think that was an impressive climb for yeah. Mejdi on that lead route. I I really like to see it when he finds his flow and it felt like he did that. He, he looks disappointed and I think that's because he knows that it wasn't enough. That 60 points is so, so high up on that wall and he didn't get there. Yeah, this is a great shot of how small these holds are. Imagine doing four of the most intense boulders of your life and having to climb a lead route like this. It's uh, a lot for the athletes to have to deal with. This was the great drop knee he found on that grey volume. Let's watch where he fell, just losing it. Smart climbing from yeah. Mesty on that route. Found some good rest in there, didn't he? OK, two done. Yannick Floey up next. Mm -hmm. 
Yannick walks out with a hand raised to say hello to the crowd. So for Yannick to get ahead of Mejdi, he needs a total of 68.9 points. So he needs to get a really good climb. We can see the 60 on the wall up there. It's, it's very high up. So in order to get into that first position, he's going to have to have a big, big effort here. Performance of a lifetime, Yannick. Let's see if you can do it. We've seen him do some really great performances, both in lead and border. Um, so it's possible. I definitely think possible. it's definitely possible for Yannick to, to get into that first position as it stands right now anyway. Yeah, okay. Big task though, he crosses through. Remember, no points down low, but soon that leaderboard will start to tick. Up into the pinch now, easy work from Yannick as he approaches the first scoring zone. Just trying not to over grip. Bit of a swing. My uh, first climbing instructor always told me quiet feet, and it looks like Yannick is sort of practicing that. Very delicate with his moves. But suddenly, the moment he latches that black one, you can see something change in his body. The tension hit in, just goes up a gear. And there, as Shauna said, look how high that first place position is. With it being such a long route, it feels like there's almost not much to say down low, but they're doing some really difficult, really impressive moves here. And there's just so much more climbing. I can't imagine how it must feel to be in that position. And I wonder if they look up and see how far they've got to go, or if their minds are just so focused on each movement. I think it's a maybe a personal preference. But Yannick climbing a lot, a lot quicker than Mejdi here. You can see he's got four minutes on the clock, whereas Mejdi had around three at this point. So yeah, he's, he's not stopping to rest. He's kind of keeping climbing, and he's keeping a really fluid pace. Yeah, he is. So good from Yannick. Drops down, goes back up to this volcano. Now this 30 hole seems to be where the athletes have to start fighting a little more. It's just awkward. So he's into the crimp now. And you say that as Yannick yeah, stops to have a little shake out on that, that <laughs> hold right there. Come on, Yannick, you're making me look silly here. He's onto the, uh, the crimp though, which has got a big tick mark on it. That's just to show the athletes where it is because it's blind. He suddenly seems to have his eyes dotting around a little bit and it's really like the roots just kicked in here. If he wraps this great volume underneath, then that would be the best resting position. Yeah, let's see if he can find that. The setters did say it was there, but a bit I weird to see. I saw something drop just a minute ago and I'm not sure if it was Yannick's glasses. I'm now, <laughs> I'm now looking. Did he start with glasses? I, I'm not sure, but he doesn't have them on right now, and he seems to look down. Oh goodness! It doesn't seem to be stopping him. I'm not. I'm. I'm don't want to speak too soon, but yeah, Yannick is really fighting up towards the 60, and it looks like he's going to make it. Oh. The body positions here have to be incredibly precise. He gets that toe on. Can he make this clip? The climbers have to make all of the clips in sequence. They're so very important. This blue section is all about finding the right body position just to make these moves possible, not to make them easier. All right, well, Yannick has done really well to get this far. He's close to the lead. What a performance from Yannick, reaches up, big wow, effort though. Wow, what a performance. 1-1-8 one, one, currently on the score, One two two now, he's coming close to, oh my god, I can't believe he's got this far. Wow, Yannick Chloe, all eyes on him right now, that was an excellent performance. <laughs> Well, I think he might be feeling really quite pumped after that. Yeah, he's dapping his forearms, he's looking at his fingers. Oh, he's um, put a big score down there. He, he really has, and I, I, I'm kind of a bit shocked. Not because I didn't think he had the ability, but look, he is picking up his glasses, so he did <laughs> drop them. So as he crossed through on those campus moves, his glasses did fall off. They seem to have survived. Um, I thought that's what happened. <laughs> wow. Well, fair play to Yannick, and even more impressive. Well, he's in the top spot. I did say earlier, I don't know how he climbs in glasses. No? Well, there we go. We need to have a word with him now. Look. Get that guy some contact. Exactly. This is an example, Yannick. <laughs> well, he has set himself 
up very well for that one. It was a good performance. He timed it well as well. Kept on going. But that does set up a sort of tantalizing proposition because, I mean, we know Yannick is a good lead climber, but when we see some of these names like Toby, Adam coming up, Alberto, this route might be toppable, which and, is exciting. And also, Sam can win it on his route. Yes, true. He's so regardless of what Toby and Adam and Alberto, all these climbers that are to come that are lead specialists, as we call them, if Sam gets to the red hold on the big red volume, that ticket is his. Okay. And it's looking more and more possible. <laughs> wow, well, this is ending up in a really exciting finish then to this competition. It was pretty exciting for the women's. I thought I'd used up all my adrenaline, but apparently not. We've got more to come. <laughs> Philip Schenk is out. Now, Philip is someone who was uh, down on the leaderboard for sure. He needs something massive here, but it is going to be unlikely. So, Philip walks over. Just one last tighten up of those shoes. Off he goes through this bottom part, as we know. Nice and simple to start with. Makes the clip. Two clips in down at the beginning. You can see a few tick marks there on the uh, blue volume. Some jibs in there, which he's now hitting. Setters aren't trying to trick the athletes. Brings up the right foot into the third quick draw as he approaches the first scoring opportunity on number one. Out to the grey volume. That's what he has to do. First place, way up on the wall. That's why I said it was going to be tricky for him. But when, it, when you look at it like that, and it's a great graphic to see, it really puts things into perspective. Yeah, it's a long route. And he's only just at point one. Exactly. Well, it begins now for Philip Schenk. Resting in a slightly different position. Most went up for the heel. Oh, he lost a foot there. I think now we'll put a heel in. Philip, up to the pinch. Can you remind me what the route setter said the start of the section was like? The Tour de France. Oh, yes, he did say that, didn't he? Yeah, he was like, you sort of ease your way into the route. I, mean, he was like, I was like, do you think someone could fall? And he was like, no, maybe not. Yeah, Shauna uh, is trying to get me a job in other sports here. <laughs> She's, uh, I've already... Definitely not trying to urge you out, that's for sure. You... Apparently so, Shauna. I mean, you know, this <laughs> no is way. a hostile takeover of the commentary box. 100% <laughs> 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 not. This is all yours. This is too intense for me to do day in, day out. Oh, Matt, no, I do not know. How on earth you do it? It is so, so hard to watch people you really care about yeah. fighting so hard for such fine margins. It really is. And Philip there swung backwards, a bit of a scorpion on the 10. I think he would have liked to have done that a bit more controlled. Crimps coming up, no foot section. Philip breathing hard. I think he's getting a bit pumped here. I think he might be because he's spending a lot of time shaking, a lot of time chalking. Kind of similar to Mejdi that he's resting in positions that aren't, aren't very easy to rest in. Just trying to get something back to allow him to keep climbing for as long as possible. We definitely want to see him get into this red section. It actually looks really fun, I think, this next red section here. So I hope he gets to enjoy a little bit of um, camping around in front of this really impressive French crowd. Yeah, he's certainly got the power for it. Well, here we go. He's going to make the clip early, then work out the sequence. I love this one arm, the amount of strength this requires. Oh, he's fit fouring it! Wow! Well, that's unique. It is a maybe a little inefficient, I might say. It didn't seem necessary, but pretty cool. Yeah, he's really going to load that arm by doing it that way, but now he's through anyway, and now he will shake out again in a unique position. Drops down and stands out away from the wall. He is chalking almost every single move. I expect he might be struggling a little bit here with skin. Quite sweaty fingertips will make it a lot harder to hold on. Um, and these are holds that are not very easy to chalk on, but every single move he makes, he's dipping into that chalk bag. Yeah, he is, you're right. 
Big move up to the pinch, though, and now he can take a bit of weight off those arms in a second if he can make this. No, he can't hit the slap, fell. Well, it was a big ask for Philip Schenk, who is more of a boulder, but and that won't be enough on the night. No, it's not going to be. He has a total of 88.1 points. Of course, when we talk about these points, they are subject to appeal. It's been... And it can't, well, we've not seen many appeals, especially on the lead route, because the main reason for appeals on a lead route usually is stepping on bolts. However, there are bolt covers here, which is great. Thank you so much to the route setters and the organizers for that. We don't like to see those appeals. So yeah, Philip is now in third position. We know he won't be getting that ticket, but a really solid performance from him throughout this competition when he's not had much experience in semi-finals, let alone finals, especially in combined events. So yeah, hopefully this will send him in really good stead going into the Olympic qualifier series, which is taking place ahead of the games, of course, next year. Yeah, exactly. Those announced recently by the IFSC. So Lots of action to look forward to next year. We just saw that big four drop down he did, and it, did, it looked even more inefficient in slow motion. He really loaded that right arm. So this is the leaderboard as it stands. Yannick Flore with a super impressive performance, moves himself into the top spot with 130.8. Then Mejdi Schalk, Philip Schenk, we just saw him. But Sam Abazu is out next, and he is, well, he can just take this before the top. Yeah, I know. And then Nikolai Uznik is the last athlete we're seeing who's got some points on the board. Toby Roberts, Alberto and Adam haven't climbed yet. Wow, what a moment. Yeah, well, we'll have a couple of minutes break before we get going into the second half of this league competition. So if you're watching, you've got a couple of minutes to go grab a glass of water and we'll see you in a sec. So as the athletes wait, sitting in that chill-out area down there, of course, backstage, eight have shrunk to four, and somewhere in the depths of this arena, there are four athletes probably waiting quite nervously behind the scenes, getting ready. Sean, I know you can't speak for the athletes, but when you were in this similar position, what mm -hmm. kind of things were you thinking about before you went to a lead route? Were you just remembering it, or...? Um, what were you doing? That's a really <laughs> good question. I was much more of a, a boulder specialist when I was doing the combined format. And when I competed at the Olympics in 2020, we had to do speed climbing, bouldering, and lead climbing all together. For me, it was really difficult to train for all three disciplines. I think it was for, for all of the athletes, in all honesty. But I really enjoyed my time on a lead rope. It was something I did a lot as a youth climber. But yeah, just going through the moves in your head, really trying to settle the nerves kind of get that focus in. Most athletes will have a routine that they perform before they come out to climb. Tying their knot in, putting their chalk bag on, putting their shoes on, they may have headphones, they may be kind of not using headphones and taking in the atmosphere. I would love to have a camera in ISO to see their little setup, to see where their mindsets are and, and almost get a little glimpse into what's going on. But as an athlete, I would have hated that, but as a spectator, I would love it. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see if that changes in the future. However, there is so much going on in that moment, in their minds, and I don't know if Sam knows that he could win it on this route. Yeah. It's, it's, I think mathematically he may have known. Um, maybe you wouldn't want to know. Did the coaches figure it out? Whew. Who knows? But yeah, it's going to be the climb of his life. He needs to really focus and keep his composure. The pressure is on this guy's shoulders right now. Well, there he is. Sam Avazu walks out, our current boulder leader in terms of scores at the end of that round. And a man who could potentially win his ticket in the next six minutes, which is a crazy thought to have. Okay, I've made myself nervous. I hope I've made you nervous at home. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Abbasu is ready. And we have a... All right, here he goes, approaches the wall. Photographers are ready and poised. And just a last reminder to go and check out all of our photographers' social media. Jan Ver is standing in front of me here in the commentary box, uh, the official photographer for the event, taking wonderful pictures. So go and have a look at his work. Sam makes the first clip, makes the oh, tried to make the second clip, thought better of it, changed his mind. Now matches the big dish. And the French team, like they did for the women, have all gathered in front of us. There's a certain uh, Oriane Berton, who's uh, in celebration mode, who's shouting up at Sam. 
She looks nervous. She's biting her nails. She's looking up. She knows what this means more than anybody else in this arena, yeah. I would argue. Yeah, she's just been through it. Can Sam repeat this for Team France? It'll be a wild party in Laval if that does happen. OK, Sam is in the points now. Already in fourth. And here we go. Already in fourth, but while a long way to go yeah. if he wants to secure that first position. That is the first position there, 48 points. That will put him in first, but that position won't guarantee him the medal um, or the ticket. So the goal, he gets a gold medal too, but the, the ticket. Okay, so we want that guarantee if you're French, if you're a Sam Avazu supporter. Now, this is where Philip started to get a little bit loose through this section. Sam sets himself, Ooh, hits that, that, the That's a little bit of a risky move there for Sam, kind of quite feisty. Yeah. Um, not as calm as I would be expecting him to look, but then suddenly composed again. So nice straight arms as he moves through this section, not wasting any energy. No, he is not. But no resting opportunity yet. And he is resting now, shaking out the arm, a swing towards the jib. He hasn't quite got that hand on the jib, but now he makes the adjustment. Ooh, little bobble there. Ariane had her head in her hands with that little bobble just now. Everyone in this room oh. really wants to see Sam walk away with the Olympic ticket. I say everyone in this room, every, I think every French person in this room maybe, I think, <laughs> think there'd be some, some supporters of the other athletes too, of course, but wow, this crowd is behind him right now. Yes, they are. And I think Sam, though, is looking, not struggling, but he's working up there. It's working, but he's found a really clever resting position here. Yeah, there is Yannick, a current leader. He's looking pretty relaxed. Sam, up towards the crimp. I wish we had Oriane cam. She's looking so nervous in front of us. Sam, out towards the crimp. This is good work. Up to second place. You might be able to hear Oriane through our mic. She is screaming that loud for Sam. <laughs> but he's doing this sequence in the way that we know is very, very tricky. He's not flipped the left hand, but he's managed to wiggle, wiggle that knee, drop knee in. He is not safe oh. here. He's jumped into first position, but that does not mean he has secured the ticket just yet. He's managed to find a rest. He misread that midsection for the easiest method, and we see him drop just there. He has left the door open for the other athletes. Whoa. I'm glad you kept yourself together there, Shauna, because I honestly completely lost it. I just had my head in my hands. And I just thought it was going to go at any moment. At one point. I, I nearly did, honestly. It was a. Uh, that was nervy there for Sam. Oh, it's so unfortunate. He, what happened was when he hit the grey volume, so there's a red hole on the grey volume, if he'd crossed underneath and wrapped the grey volume, he would have got a little bit back. He wouldn't have been fighting as hard. The root setters said that that section was tricky to read, and it proved really difficult for Sam. And wow, he's left the door open now. Yeah, he has couple of athletes to go, three more. Sam did enough to get into the top spot, but only just. And he's going to be looking up at that screen and being very worried. Yannick will uh, give up that number one spot. Let's see some of his highlights. Easy clips down low. A couple of big swings along the way, but I think he started to struggle a little bit after this section. Well, sorry, the lower section, the no foot section, but this is where he just got a bit of root reading wrong, maybe. Deep, deep drop knee, couldn't save him. Went all the way up, couldn't hold that. Firing off, never wanted to let go. So Alberto comes out, the Olympic champion with work to do out there on the lead wall for sure. Yeah, so if he gets to the 60 point mark, so hold 40, there's two scores on that hold. So if he matches that, he brings his second hand in he will jump into the lead. That won't guarantee him the win. Now Toby can take it regardless of what anyone else does. <laughs> he obviously has to give the performance of a lifetime, um, but it's all open. It is all open. We don't know who has this, we really don't. 
Let's see what Alberto can do. A couple of clips, nice and easy down low. Don't get gripped, don't get pumped, don't panic. Nice and easy. Yeah, simple when I say it like that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there he's down on the leaderboard. 69.7 from Boulder. He was in that 60s group of Toby and Adam. There is the gold position as it stands before the others come. And Alberto is now scoring points, so here we go. Bit of a fumble on that clip, but all good. And watch for his body to change here. Everyone else has just tensed up the second they hit this black one, like, oh, okay, business time now. Reaches all the way around that black volume, comes in underneath. He's looking smooth. He is looking very smooth. Gets that right foot down on the friction. Swings out as we've seen a few do now. Yeah, he, it was a big swing, but he seemed really controlled. It doesn't seem to have flustered him in any way. He's climbing with a relatively good pace, but maybe not as fast as we've seen Alberto climb previously, but this is the end of a very long season and the end of a very big comp. However, all that matters for him right now is his moves ahead of him. Exactly, no feet coming up. He's got to make that clip first before he drops down though, and he is taking his time through here, using those crimps to the full, hits the gym. Will we see the fig four again or will we see the campus to right? I'm going to guess it'll be the campus. I think so. I think uh, Sam and Philip read that together, a similar height, and it kind of makes sense. But you did say that the, the fig four made it look like they potentially used too much energy I, through I, that section. Yeah, it's hard to tell in slow motion, isn't it? It just weights the arm so much. And I think Alberto's way is cleaner for me anyway. And faster. <laughs> yes. All right, gets the toe hook briefly, then goes up towards the crimps. And our first athlete to move straight through that 30, not yeah. finding a rest in there, not needing to find a rest, arguably. So potentially in for a, a new high point, if he can keep it together through this next section. He seems to be looking for a foot here and having to slap quite aggressively into this undercut. But he did, and he made it work. I think this route is all about how you can get through this section. I think if you can find an easy solution through it, you're set for the top. If not, like we saw on Sam, you start to struggle. Yeah, so Alberto not seeing the undercut wrap, but didn't seem to slow him down too much. No. There is our current leader, Sam Abazu, sitting in the middle next to Mejdi, his teammate. Alberto up to fourth now. Oh, gets a knee in. Interesting. Yeah, you can just see there how bad that hold is. There is really not very much on it. If he hits this next hold and gets both hands on it, he will jump into the current lead. Up he goes, everyone. If you're a Sam supporter, is holding their breath. That's the first position now he's matched it, so that should move him up. But he doesn't have the clip, so oh, yes. it'll be really interesting to know what difference that makes. If he, he has been awarded those points on the board as it stands. You could potentially argue that he would struggle to be able to clip from there. So what happens is they are marked down from the last potential clipping position. But the root setters might deem that the next hold, it's hard to know. And um, we'll see if it gets an appeal or not. But as it stands, Alberto is in first position. He can be beaten. I was watching the French coaches there as you were saying that, seeing if anyone would stand up. And one did and move away. So we'll wait and see. I think you might be right, Sean, but we'll have to wait just to add some more tension to this. Yeah, I mean, the fact that it's been awarded will suggest that the route setters have deemed it a clippable position. So, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. I, I'm, I'm not sure if we'll see anything change there. So unfortunate for Sam that he won't walk away with that ticket here, but he is qualified for the Olympic Qualifier Series next year. OK, well, good work from Sam. But Alberto doing what he needed to do, and we saw those Olympic rings there. I love watching that tattoo, everyone who's got them. It's just such a stamp of, like, achievement and excellence. And Sean has shown me hers right now. There it is. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a truly unique thing to be able to put on your body. <laughs> I 
Two climbers to go. One of them is Adam Ondra. He jogs out, looking active, awake, and ready for this one. Okay, and for Adam to take the lead away from Alberto, it is one hold higher. He needs a total of 64.8 points, so hold 41, which is the hold above where Alberto just got to right now. Can Adam take it away? from Alberto. <laughs> Which would be a great story. I remember back in the day when Alberto and Adam used to train together. <laughs> it was like his prodigy coming through. So it'd be an interesting story if that goes full circle. We'll see. Adam is taking his time. His hands have been in a chalk bag all the way. He's trying to make sure of it. How many videos, how many times have I watched, or we watched, has everyone watched Adam Ondra climb? He's one of the most well-known climbers in the world. And suddenly all of that disappears though, and it becomes about this route, this moment. And Adam wants it. He's still as hungry as he's ever been for competition climbing. It's, you know, he came into the competition scene at 16 years old, winning world championships and world titles from kind of from the get-go. He's very much one of the most prolific climbers, both in competition and on rock in the world, but he's always here and always fighting. He just, he wants to climb every single thing that's put in front of him. Yeah, that's his instincts, isn't it? But that clip is, I'm not sure if that clip got flicked before or after, but it's just slightly turned on the dog bone there. The dog bone. Do you not call it a dog bone? I call it a dog bone. The, uh, the hangy bit in the middle. What do you call it? <laughs> I don't know. Have you never heard dog bone? Oh. Well, it's sorted itself out now anyway, pointing the right way. Wraps his arms around the black volume, drops into the undercling. This year more than ever, we've seen Adam make a couple of unexpected mistakes, I'm, I'm going to say, on lead climbs. Normally we, we've not seen that in the previous years with Adam. So. I almost hold my breath when he's climbing because I don't know what's coming. I used to feel like it was quite a given that we would see him way up high on the lead wall, but in Bern in particular, so at the World Championships, the first opportunity to qualify for the Olympics, he, he lost it on the lead yeah. route. And, you know, he's going to be wanting to come here today and give absolutely everything that he can to try and get that ticket because it really does change things going into next season. It changes the setup, it changes their training. Everything will be a lot easier and a lot simpler if you can walk away with that ticket today. Yeah, you're very right. And you're right about the mistakes sometimes as well. Adam can do that. So, but a very static way to drop down. Has that healing all the way? So different method from Adam. Now drops down into that undercling. 94.9 as he comes up towards the 100 mark for his total score. Ooh, and Oof. a big slip there from Adam. Yeah, and you saw him breathe deep there as he got that. And you can see now that's the hole he just cut loose on. It's a tiny, teeny little hold, but he managed to keep it together. I do wonder what that's just cost him, though. A slip like that will really start to zap the powers at the forearms. Yeah, you usually see a mistake like that kick in in about five moves time, you know, it builds. So we'll have to see. Shaking out. <laughs> There's potential to see a real surprise with this. Off Adam goes into the pinches. Reading this section really well, getting that undercut, but not spending any time resting there. He's moved straight through it. He stood up nice and tall, hips close to his hand in that position, and the atmosphere in here has just reached a whole new level right now. Yeah, I think the team, the uh, crowd, know a French athlete won't take it. They're getting right behind Adam instead. Up he goes, feet scrabbling. Hits the pinch this time, a little bit snatchy from Adam. But he looks to be getting that clip in. If he makes the clip, he can keep climbing through this next section and be awarded those points. He is two hand movements away from reaching the first position. Yes, that does not guarantee him a gold medal this evening. It doesn't guarantee him his ticket, but he's got one more move and then he... <gasps> Oh, he, he slips. He's again, Adam. That's third place for Adam Andres. Sean has said it earlier on, and Alberto suddenly, I mean, that says it all. He is now, oh my goodness, he is well one climber away 
from being in the Olympics, and that has just changed everything. Adam Andre, he's making some big mistakes that are really costing him, and we've seen him make such like that previously. He just lost his ticket once again on a foot slip. Wow, drama at the end of this competition in Laval, and that means that Toby Roberts has a chance as well. He is the last athlete out. If you could write a script for a dramatic ending to a competition, this would be it. I'd have a car chase. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a car chase in there and we're, Matt's happy. <laughs> no, I'm happy at that point. Let's watch this then. This is the little slip down low. That was Alberto's reaction to it. And this is where he fell. What happened? Watch the feet, maybe. Yeah. It was a right, right it, toe. Yeah, yeah, his right foot slipped. He looked totally solid. I have no idea why his foot popped. Unbelievable. And that was Alberto's reaction. He knows. Yeah, he knows what that meant. Okay, final athlete in the shadows is Toby Roberts. Someone just sent me a message saying, this is hard to watch. It is hard to watch. There is Tristan, Toby's dad. Yeah, I mean, Tristan there can if only we're finding imagine it hard, how he feels right now. He's on his feet and he's sat back down. He doesn't know what to do with himself. I don't think I do right now. Well, Alberto is in the hot spot. The other athletes have gathered around him. They're not in contention. Only Toby can do it. But look, we talked about Adam making mistakes. We've seen Toby make mistakes. We've seen him make mistakes. I don't want to talk up. about Toby making mistakes. <laughs> Shut up, Matt. We're not talking about that right now. <laughs> okay, that's, that's fair enough. Positivity. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, of course, it would be great for Toby to qualify. I talked about in the women's how Orion was coming to take it off Stasha. And yeah, that was kind of felt like it was Orion's from the get-go. And, you know, after Toby's performance yesterday, it seemed like it was his. We knew that Sam could do it. He didn't quite make it to the point that secured him that position. And Alberto, we could never count him out. He's the Olympic gold medalist. Yeah. So he could definitely take it here. And he's in the hot seat right now. But Toby, it's all eyes on Toby because he is the only person left playing this game. Yeah, um, we're having a bit of a pause here. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I'm not sure if it's that quick draw we saw. Adam, maybe it's that, but no one's making a movement towards that direction. And I haven't got a message yet to let me know. So whatever's happening, we're having a brief pause. If Toby gets to hold 40, he wins. Wow. Well, that's what he has hold to Hold 40 hold. is the second hand on the 60 points. If he gets two hands on the 60 points, if he gets the position that Adam fell in, if he does the exact same thing as Adam, he gets his Olympic ticket. Wow. Well, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Here comes Toby, past Tristan, his dad, past Alberto in our current top spot. Toby Roberts, it's all down to you now. He's been climbing forever, it seems. Outdoors, he was climbing hard grades at a young age. He entered the comp scene. I remember him bringing us on in his first senior competition, how well he did there. He that was just last year. Yeah, was it just last year? Wow, mm -hmm. yeah. And I just said to him, you know, like, how are you feeling? He was like, oh, I'll see what happens. And then he went on to win medals, and suddenly he's a real contender. Yeah, it? this has been his first full season on the adult, on the senior circuit. And wow, what a season it's been. He's won a gold medal in Boulder, a gold medal in lead. It has been such a privilege to watch him climb and excel throughout this season. However, in Bern at the World Championships, we kind of saw Toby's weaknesses very much truly exposed. And he's gone away, he's worked on them, and he's come into this event. A different climber. Yep, I agree. More relaxed, more calm. I just, well, we'll see if he can hold it all together. More relaxed, more calm, but also you can see that he's he's got a confidence about him that I think when Toby looks calm and confident together, I've said it before, and magic things really can happen, but you also did say that he can make mistakes, and I know that is true. <sighs> well, We've just got five more minutes and then it'll all be over, so let's see what Toby can do. Exactly. Fingers crossed, everyone watching at home, if you're a Toby fan, if you're an Alberto fan, <laughs> also have your fingers crossed. It could be anyone's. Toby in the points now, easy through the bottom. Slow climbing, though. Dangles off that right heel, and now he'll get going properly. <laughs> Up he goes. 
muscles standing out as he matches underneath on that black hold. High heel. This is where the first nervy moment where he will cut loose. Up he goes, holds it nicely, brings the foot back in. Good precision. Toby out towards the right. More points from now on, of course, as they ramp up. Slight little grimace on his face there as he brought that heel in, maybe having to work a little harder than he expected. But right now, just taking a moment to check the clock. That's what he's doing, looking behind him there. We see athletes do that. Um, Maybe not obvious what they're, what they're doing when they seem to look towards the ground. They're not, they're not checking how high they are. <laughs> no, exactly. Well, three minutes 55 on the clock. Toby's about to enter the no foot section. The first place where really he could make a mistake. So let's see. High heel in order to rest. And a big swing out to the jib. Oh, he's having a... Yeah, thank you. Get that clip in. <laughs> He almost dropped down before he did that, which would have been a big mistake. He hits the fig four. And he's kind of got tangled up in the rope. I really don't know if that helped him. That's a big boost, and he had to be so that accurate. That was risky from Toby there. He put the fig four in. He took it back out again, opted against it. Not, not what I would expect to see. He kind of went from such a comfortable flow state to starting to look a little bit flustered and I think we'll see him take a bit of a rest here now if he can find a good position he hasn't done yet though and he is currently standing on the dual texture part of that volcano he does look to have now kind of settled into a resting position but maybe not a very good one because he's not stayed there for very long he's, he's not looking as comfortable right now as I would expect to see Toby at this point yeah, for sure, this is not the smooth performance Toby fans would have wanted to see, but he's still going. Up towards the crimp, cuts loose as he finds some feet. Now, will he oh, work he this out? He has wrapped underneath, which is we know is the easiest way, and we know is a position to get a bit of a rest in. He's looking for that drop knee, and he turns it in, and he's clipping off that really terrible pinch. That's one of the worst holds on the route, and it doesn't look like it because it is so big, but you can see their fingers, they can't bend. He's really nearly approaching the point at which he will be getting that ticket. He's just got a few holds away. He needs to move up to the next blue hold. Then he hits the 60 with the left hand. If he brings the right hand into the 60, the Olympic ticket will be his. This is where Adam made the mistake, though, this section. Toby creeps up. That's one hand. He needs two on it. He doesn't know, of course. He's got a low, low heel, makes the clip before bothering with the match. Hits the match now, so we wait for this float score to be updated. There it is. Toby takes the top spot. That is 1-3-3-8. That is the win and the lead. And the Olympic ticket. And Toby Roberts is going to become an Olympian. <laughs> I'm trying my best not to swear. <laughs> no, it's fine. Now the crowd respond. They let him know. And I think if Toby didn't before, he knows now. I want to see a shot of his dad wherever he is as well. Toby up towards the blue crimps, hits the top one, wants the cross through, gets the high heel in, and this is a victory lap, and he knows, and what a moment. Ah, <laughs> oh, unreal. Toby Roberts, first senior full year, is on the last few moves of this lead climb. There's the last clip. It doesn't really matter, but let's see it. Eh? It doesn't matter, but boy, does he want to put on a show oh. for this crowd. We know Toby loves a moment like this. This is his moment right now. Big swing from Toby. Hits the feet. Two moves to go towards that 100 points. 40 seconds to go as well. And he's just stopping for a little chalk. Why not? Just um, having a little chill. He's just taking it all in up there. The root setters, they wanted to see someone on this move, and Toby is delivering. Come on, Toby. Here we go. One last couple of moves. And it is a big old throw up there, isn't it? You've got to pogo over somehow. He's just turning around <laughs> to check the time. Here goes the swing. Up to oh, the top. He does it. Beautiful for Toby. And I tell you what, there's a bit of irony there. Do you remember in Burn when he missed that swing and a jump and that put him out? Well, he's put it to rights at the top of this wall. Toby Roberts, the only athlete to top out. He didn't need to, but what a way to finish as Toby Roberts takes an Olympic ticket and heart goes out, though, to that man on screen, Alberto Hines Lopez. The crowd are on their feet. Everybody is screaming. I've just seen a sleeping baby be woken up to all of, 
of this noise. There's his dad. Even they look happy. There's Toby's dad. Oh, well, oh that's, what a moment. That's what I, I wanted to see. I cannot wait to see that picture. <laughs> And I tell you what, just a shout out Tristan, he travels the world with Toby, he's his constant b <laughs> companion. And he deserves that hug as much as anyone, his coaches dad, as well. His coach, oh. he, Tristan has been there for Toby, of course, throughout this entire process. And you, you, you mentioned Toby on that last move, a move that would have tested Toby in Bern. And boy, has he gone away and made such incredible improvements. Fair play, Toby. Indeed. Well, Sean, in a couple of minutes, we'll go and interview him. Sean is kind of blinking back tears here in the commentary box. It's very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> so Toby Roberts will enjoy this moment in the spotlight, and we will get to hear from him in a couple of minutes after the flower ceremony. And he'll go over and greet his athletes first. Sean, I'm so excited for you to interview him as well. I mean, you were the last <laughs> GP, you know, Olympic athlete. You get to go and speak to another one. How perfect is that? I want to say I can't believe it, but that would be a lie. I really can. Toby <laughs> has gone from strength to strength, and we've seen him progress and really excel into the athlete that he is. He climbs with such maturity and, like, almost beyond his years. You know, he's only 18 years old. He's got so much more to give this sport. And, oh, I get to, we get to watch him at the Olympics. We do indeed. That will take place next summer in Paris. And we uh, have the flower ceremony first, then Shauna's interview, and then we will move on to the podium. So don't go anywhere there. Celebrate with our athletes. They deserve it. They deserve your support. And do thank you as well. If anyone's been watching all the way through today's entertainment, we appreciate it too. OK. Well, <laughs> I'm going to take a breath as well here because there's a lot going on. I got a feel for Alberto though. We saw that shot of him sitting there just contemplating how close he came to another Olympic place. And it's not over for all of the no. other athletes. We've mentioned it previously. I'm almost certain that all of these athletes are qualified for the Olympic qualifier series, which is taking place next year. There are still 10 spots available. Sean, I think you being ushered to go. Uh, I think you are anyway, just in case. So, Sean, look, let's say goodbye so you're not rushing. Thank <laughs> you so, so much for joining me here in the commentary box once again. It's been fun. <laughs> yeah, it really has been fun. Thank you so much for having me, Matt. And good luck with the rest of the qualification events that are to come. I can't wait to watch and I will be looking forward to, to listening to you from back home but yeah it's been a true privilege to be here with you in the commentary booth. Thank you Shauna well I think we might see each other next year who knows <laughs> let's leave it like that. Maybe. Maybe perhaps. Well, All right. <laughs> Shauna thank you so much I'll see you soon. Thank you and thank you to everyone listening. Good night. All right well ceremony time. Shauna will go down and get ready for that interview with Toby. She'll make her way over that, but stick with me as I chat you through all this last bit of action. Ladies and gentlemen, the unofficial top three for the uh, European Olympic qualification tournament. Seven place, uh, representing France, uh, Sam Avazou. Sam Avazou is announced. He's the first one to run onto the stage. Second place. He might have taken it on a different occasion. He did so, so well in Boulder. Tonight it's third, though. And Alberto, you can't really imagine what he's going through. It's just to come within touching distance of that ticket. But that man has a big smile on his face. Toby will be climbing in Paris. All of that hard work worth it. Look at the pump on his arms as well. He was working so hard. Such a change, isn't it? I mean, usually on the podium, we've got lots of smiles, but obviously it means something slightly different for this podium tonight. Well, they leave. Toby will be directed back the other way in a second, and let's just get confirmation of the final results, shall we? Toby Roberts, 169.8 his total. That was enough beating Alberto Hines Lopez. Sam Abazou in third place, he takes the bronze. Then Adam Ondra with that big slip, who knows what could have been. Yannick Flobe, Mejdi Schalk, Philip Schenk, and Nikolai Uznik make up our top eight. 
Sutton, 79.5 points to 169.8. There's a vast range in scores, but congratulations to everyone. <laughs> Well, we are minutes away from the interview. They're preparing it. Toby's in place. Shauna is there. So, in fact, let's go down to Shauna, who's found Toby Roberts. <laughs> well, we're just watching a best of. Sorry, I got that wrong. This was uh, Toby on the slab. Made his way up towards the top. This was him getting early points on the board. Big swing to save himself on that boulder. And he decided to use that Adam, off, odd, Adam Ondra style heel hook. You saw him hesitate down low on that move. Gave us a bit of a moment, but he got that heel in. Reached all the way over. And look, just very, very quickly, because I've managed to grab uh, a current, a new Olympic. We've got uh, Oriane Berton. Oriane, before we have the interviews, congratulations on that Olympic win. How are you feeling? Is it settled in yet? Not yet. <laughs> Probably not. I, I'm, I know I'm very happy and I think it's going to take some time to sink in. But yeah, I know already that it's crazy and I'm so happy about it. <laughs> okay, well, Oriane, I'll let you get away. Thank you so much for taking Thank the moment to talk much, to me. Congratulations. <laughs> See you later. Well, we're watching finally as Toby tops out that lead route. What a moment for him, screaming at the top. And that was what it took from Toby over to his dad. Well, let's go down to Shauna and Toby, shall we? And let's hear it from the man himself. Toby, my cheeks are hurting from how much I've been smiling. Wow, wow, what a privilege it is to be doing this interview and to be speaking to you just after you've got an Olympic ticket. Can, can you tell us how you feel? Um, I'm truly, truly lost for words. Um, yeah, I don't think this is ever going to sink in. Coming into this competition, I tried to come over no expectations and just enjoy the climbing. And yeah, I just have no words. Climbing on these routes has just felt incredible. And yeah, it's not, it's not quite got in yet that I've just qualified <laughs> the Olympics. It's just such a big dream for me. Um, I've been training for so long for this and it just means so much. And we saw you just miss out on that ticket in Bern. And, you know, I feel like that event exposed some weaknesses that you might have had and you've, you've gone away, you've worked hard on them. Are you happy with how you've climbed here? Because, wow, it looks like you've gone away and made some massive improvements. I'm so happy. Having come so close in Bern, I think in Bern I, I really let the pressure get to me more. And, yeah, some of my weaknesses got exposed. So going away from Bern, the aim was to work on my weaknesses coming to the competition and then just go in with a clear head and just truly enjoy the climbing because that's why that's why I do it and I was able to come in and just yeah enjoy every boulder and every route that I tried and that's when the best results come. It <laughs> sure is and we got to witness some magical performances you know up there on the top of that lead route it looked absolutely insane did you in, did you enjoy that route? The, the route was incredible I've always said that my favorite place to be is like fighting hard in a head wall <laughs> and it doesn't get much better than that like really just having to pull some of the, those blue holes aren't that great and really trying to aren't that great that through. might be an understatement <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really fighting on those felt really good. And that last jump, just, um, yeah, the, the cherry on top, really. <laughs> so it definitely made you work for it. You know, these guys, your fellow competitors. It was a fight right until the very, very end of this competition. You're going to go away now. Do, do you get a holiday after this? <laughs> Surely you must. Um, yeah, there's definitely a holiday needed. The nature of these combined comps, literally you have to be so perfect in every round, otherwise you won't, won't make it through in the competition. So um, everyone's just so strong. So... Trying to be consistent through the rounds is really hard, and yeah, putting it together on that route was really was a really good moment. I know you have a really strong support system. I know your dad is stood <laughs> right by us, and I can't wait to go and give him a big high five and a hug in a minute. Because wow, what an emotional experience this has been for everyone involved. Do you have, what do you want to say to them? Yeah, my dad and my family are just such a huge part of the process. I'm so thankful for all the support that he gives me. Like, he's always here in the competitions, always there to kind of. Um, just debrief me on, on the comps and, and like cheer me up when, I, when it's not gone so well. So yeah, I'm hugely thankful to my parents and my dad and 
Yeah, just happy to have him here. <laughs> it really is a team effort, of course. Yeah. That performance was all you, but there's a big team behind it making these moments happen. Thank you so much for talking to us, Toby. Congratulations. Enjoy the break. <laughs> and I know you'll be heading into that Games off a big pre-season, <laughs> training really hard because it's what you love to do. So, yeah, can't wait for some training sessions in Sheffield, Toby. <laughs> yeah, for sure a lot of training to do. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much to Toby. Lovely to hear his thoughts straight after that, and uh, great to see Shauna interview him. Well, podiums are coming up next. We'll have a couple of minutes while the athletes are <laughs> gathered. That is a bit of a nightmare trying to find all those athletes, getting them in the same place, getting them in team kit. But confirmation of all the results. Ariane Berton, of course, she just came on air briefly as she walked past. We just grabbed her. Number one spot for her, the gold. Stashigeo, silver. Laura Rogera, bronze. So we will see them in a couple of sets receive their well-deserved medals. Of course, Toby, Sam and Alberto will get theirs too. And for the European athletes, that's it. No more IFSC comps for them, but do not panic. The IFSC will continue. Jakarta very soon for the Asian qualifier and Africa and Oceania after that. And then... Then the season comes to an end. If we ramp it up, I think end of March, April next year, we will restart again. But more comps to come. Of course, we had the Pan Ams last week. The speed, Boulder and lead. More tickets getting away. And of course, every ticket we give away, that means there's one less available. So the pressure ramps up for the athletes. The ones who came close but no cigar, they've got to go again, retrain, refocus. And I remember, all this is just to get an Olympic place. Once you're in, well, then I guess the real job starts, doesn't it? You've got to try to win the thing. <laughs> Can't even imagine that right now. Well, while we're waiting, let's have a look at Oriane Berton and how well she did on the way to the gold. I'll let you enjoy a couple of minutes of this. Up she goes towards the top, 25 points. That hole was not a jug. But good work from her, and that's how things really started off early on. Up towards that slab, so many athletes reaching towards that hole, getting one hand on it, but not managing to get two, but Oriane did it well. What a jump as well, didn't catch that during the live. And then that flag-like move, you feel like an utter hero when you pull a move like that off, especially when the crowd are screaming your name. And finally, this coordination move, <laughs> she was celebrating almost before her fingertips locked onto that egg. But that was her boulder. And then the lead was pretty impressive too. Up towards the purple holds, finally falling there. By that point, she'd done enough. And then she was just waiting. She was disappointed initially, but then look. And that run over to hug the coach. <laughs> so much passion there. Lorianne is one of those climbers. You can just see. Well, there she is. She's looking at a little bit sort of calmer and more collected, of course, than when she was climbing. Oriane has had time for it to start to settle in. Laura will stand up for bronze. Big smile on her face. She would have wanted two spots higher, but it's still a medal at a huge event. Flowers are given, the medals are received. Haven't spotted a trophy yet. You know how I like to uh, judge the trophies. Stasher in the background, smile on her face now, but a tough pill to swallow this one. She came really close, found so much endurance from training, and yeah, that face kind of says it all, doesn't it? Close, so, so close. Nastasha will have to wait. There are more opportunities, of course, next year for her. <laughs> and any other day, Stasha would be delighted with that silver, but oh, close, but not quite. But, Oriane Berton in Laval, France. Couldn't really write it. 
She takes gold. She takes the Olympic ticket. And Oriane Berton at 18 will fight at the Olympics in a couple of months. And who knows what might happen. And then the emotion kicks in for Oriane. That medal suddenly will feel weighty around her neck. And the tears come. Mesdames et messieurs, veuillez vous lever pour l'hymne national français. What a moment here in Laval, that French national anthem sounded so good. The perfect end for the women's competition for Oriane. Picks up the flowers. Ah, oh, there's just, look at those faces, three faces, three very, very different thoughts. They throw the flowers out into the ground, now they're laughing. Not sure who they just took out one of those flowers, but someone might have a flower bruise, who knows. So the women will clearly clear the stage. We'll reset for the men. We just heard Toby Roberts in the interview. He'll be backstage now getting that team kit on. I see logo projected up onto the wall. It's been a long season, hasn't it? I remember Hachiochi when we started things off. The trip to Japan and the Asia leg of the world tour. Now back in France. Giving away quite a few tickets now. Do remember if you uh, haven't seen any of the broadcasts or perhaps you've just joined us, you can go and watch this. Eurosport and Discovery Plus, but YouTube as well for this event, free to watch. And of course we have highlights going on editing team working hard as we speak behind the scenes to prepare that for you. And always lots of extra content coming through the IFSC Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Oh wait, no, X, right? Yeah, that one. Go check it out. Here we go though, time for the men. They've been announced, they're waiting behind that arch. And here they come. Toby will be in the middle. Alberto and Sam. And again, three. I mean, look at that side from Alberto. He knows. The thing is, the work just keeps on for those guys. Sam Avazu, though, what a boulder round he had. Put himself in a fantastic position to take the win in the lead. Couldn't quite do it on the night, but showed himself to be one to watch for the future and for possible future Olympic tickets as well. Next up will be the Olympic champion waiting. Can Alberto get back to the Olympics? Can he defend that title? We'll have to wait a little longer to find out. But for now, silver will be a consolation for him. <laughs> it's a brave thing to do, to stand up there in those lights in front of everyone's eyes. 
and hide that disappointment. Huge respect to everyone who's had to do that. But we will celebrate now because Toby Roberts from Great Britain will take our final Olympic place of the weekend. Stands up high and tall, and so he should. A great performance from a young athlete who is one who burst onto the scene and has made such an impact. And now we wait while the national anthem of Great Britain will be prepared and played. His eyes finding familiar faces in the crowd. He doesn't quite know where to look. Wonderful shot of Toby's medal there, showing us exactly where we are, in case you've forgotten. Congratulations to Toby once again. I can't say it enough times, really, but it takes a lot of work to get to where he is and to where Oriane was. Three men stand up top of the podium. Alberto nearly falls off the podium. <laughs> Well, in a couple of minutes, we will say goodbye to you. That's it for Europe qualifier. Now we turn our attention towards Asia. Jakarta will be the next location. Who will be your favorite to take that place? Thank you so much to Sean Acoxie for joining me in the commentary box. All the athletes for performing and everyone behind the scenes who has worked so hard. We will return soon in Jakarta for the next round. My name is Matt Groom and I will see you very soon.